everybody. Tonight we are continuing and more than likely finishing the main story of Super Mystery Dungeon. We've come quite a come, quite a ways, haven't we? It does feel like this is the longest any of the like main stories have gone. Cause I think like in terms of length, it would be this game, Explorers, then probably Rescue Team, then GTI. GTI was kind of short, all things considered. I, at least it felt short. It could just be that they actually condensed and focused the story. So it doesn't feel as expansive as some of the others. But yeah, just a lot of things have been happening here. <laughs> So I can only guess that this is going to be uh, 20 chapters overall for this, like, main story. And then we'll have to see what the, like, if there's, uh, what kind of post-game there is. Because every Mystery Dungeon game has had a post-game so far. So I wonder what it would be like. Because the post-game for Rescue Team was mostly just random assorted, like, rescue adventures. Sometimes, although usually it just bo boiled down to, oh, uh, a legendary, go fight him. But then there were ones like, uh, like, uh, the Gardevoir stuff and, uh, Latios and Latias. Those were two nice post-game things. And then with Explorers, there was a lot of post-game stuff. And then the special episodes. And then with GTI, the only real post-game was getting the player back, which was cool. It was a playable epilogue of getting the player back, which was new. And so, no idea what things could go here for, like, the post-game or even the ending. Because this one has been far more story-story. For all I know, I could end up sacrificing myself and dying and then have to be brought back with the power of friendship. Apparently <laughs> from YouTube chat. Oh, this game has a post game, all right. Yes. If there's like 10 chapters of post game, so it's kind of like a three act structure. There's the breather arc of the school in Serene Village. Then there's the meat of the story. And then like whatever the post game is. Or even if it's just like five chapters. Like I'm just really enjoying this game. And I cannot wait to see what happens. Because last time, we were in hell, basically. <laughs> the closest thing, where apparently if you get turned to stone, you get zapped to this hell dimension, and there's like this one way out, but it's basically just a taunt because the evil shadow monsters that aren't even Pokemon, you actually get to fight non-Pokemon things as normal enemies to a degree, like, just blot out the light of goodness and lock you in there, and everybody that we know is basically, like, because we watched it happen to, like, Buzel, Dedene, Archon, and, like, presumably, like, we didn't even get to see it happen to Bunnelby, and it presumably happened to the legendary beasts in Mawile, and then there's everybody else we know who's been turned to stone, and, uh, well, hopefully, it if we get, like, to the Tree of Life, it can, like, bring forth more Miracle Water and we can save everybody. Hopefully. Eh. We haven't even seen what the, the, the Dark Matter looks like. We're gonna have to fight Yevatel and Nuzleaf and the Behem remnants. Whoa, just so much to do. But either way, we bro uh, broke our way out, had some mental breakdowns of realizing everybody, well, like 90% of everybody we know and love is uh, functionally dead. And uh, now we're gonna have uh, the BHM lead us through the prehistoric ruins. We're probably gonna see everybody's frozen stone corpses on the way there. That's gonna be fun. And uh, we're gonna see what happens. Oh boy! Level 27 seems under level for end game. It didn't feel like the game gave me that many opportunities to, like, choose to do it on my own. A lot of the time, it just like, no, you have to go do the story. So I have no idea. And I did, like, a an unknown was motivated expedition. But we shall survive. We have five billion diddly D. Oh, I forgot to activate my diddly D controller. I'm a fool. 
This is what happens when you run low on time and get confused. Neon has hurt himself in his confusion. There we go. We found an apple, but we have a lot of reviver seeds, so hopefully things will go good. There appear to be difficult in uh, calculations written here. It also says I'm a genius. Of course he would. It is silent. There is, this is probably very uncomfortable for the Behem and Gabriel, because Gabriel was beating the shit out of this Behem just a minute ago. The Tree of Life is in the prehistoric ruins. Go there and destroy dark matter. I know that you don't fully trust me still, but you have to believe that I'm telling the truth about this. Neon, let's go to the harbor. We've got to have Lapras take us to the prehistoric ruins. God, the silence is deafening. You two, be careful. I'll try to reach Amphros again later. We'll definitely need. And here we have the makeshift guild of uh, <laughs> the trading guild. All right, detect loop can go away. All right. Let's see, I guess I'll take a big apple. And you know what, even this perfect apple for emergencies. And let's take a big chunk of Reviver Seeds. We're always here to help the Expedition Society. Which is currently three children. And a normal Reviver Seed. Screw it. Don't think there's anything else. Like, if I wanted, I could binge my <laughs> six diddly Ds to increase some stats. Ah, uh, why not? We'll do at least a few. What do you think we should do if we don't have want to be turned to stone? The answer is run! <laughs> of course, exchange for items. I'll grab a protein. I'll grab two proteins. Let's see, uh... Two calciums for the boy. Hmm. And you know what? Oh, because I'm, I'm full. Let's see, is there anything that I want to deposit away so I can bring more in? Well, I guess the Revive All Orb, I haven't been using that. And one Orenberry. And then we'll bra get some speed proteins to split between me and Gabriel. And then we'll do them when we get there. Still utterly horrifying that Swirlix just kind of gave up. Oh, and it's playing depressing music. I guess that's fair. <laughs> Can we not even see here? Neon, we have to get to the prehistoric ruins. Let's head to the harbor where Lapras is. I guess they didn't want to program in a apocalypse version of the cafe. Which, fair. I heard all about it from Esper. You want to go to the prehistoric ruins? They lay beyond the submerged cave that is east of this town. What? There's a cave under the ocean? That's right. Make it through that cave and you'll reach the base of the prehistoric ruins. Are you ready to head out? All right. Let's go, Neon. Wonderful. I finally reached you. How are things going on your side, sir? I see. Gabriel and Neon are headed to the prehistoric ruins as we speak. Right, I understand. Then I won't try to call them back. Yes. If anything changes, I'll be sure to let you know. But what the fuck? 
Why, game? What do you mean? Is it because Esper secretly had evil in her heart and that allowed dark matter in? Or is Nuzleaf like a double agent? Because she said specifically about not calling them back. I don't know. I want the darling, Mr. Nuzleaf. So either it has to be like... Chapter 20, the prehistoric ruins to the east. I'm just trying to think of what that could mean. Because... Uh, I get... Because... Who knows, maybe there's a big old Xanatos gambit going on, speed chess and all this. Where they're like, they need us for some reason. Again, we've yet to figure out what Gabriel's deal is. So I guess they kind of figured that if anybody could make it out of the hell dimension, Gabriel and I could. And where to play a role in the ending? I don't know. I don't know. That is just another sucker punch. We're nearly there, everyone. Which also means that this Behem could also be playing along and not actually... If, like, they are leading us to the tree. Maybe they're not even leading us to the tree. They're just leading us into a trap. Who knows? We've arrived. This small island here is in the middle of the Eastern Sea, and... It is where you'll find the undersea cave that connects to the base of the prehistoric ruins. This is the entrance to the submerged cave. You must head below the very sea floor. There you'll find the prehistoric ruins. They were built on a continent where Pokemon once prospered long ago, but it sank to the bottom of the sea. Ah, Poke Atlantis. Fitting how there's possessions here. I'll show you the way through, but I'll still ask you two to take the lead when we're in the dungeon. I'll be supporting you from the rear. That way, you two can battle as you need to. Yeah, that's what you say. Or you might just be planning to attack us from behind. What would I stand to gain attacking you in the middle of a dungeon? We are in the middle of the ocean. Uh, well, yeah, that's true, I guess. But it still seems kind of suspicious. Neon, whatever he may say, I don't trust this guy. Let's be on our guard down there. If you feel like you need to go back to Lively Town for anything, just come and tell me. I'll be here. Thanks, Lapras. I guess we're off. We're headed beneath the sea. I'll show you the way. Well, Neon, let's be careful around this behem. Enter the submerged cave. And what I'll do is I'll like use up a little bit of uh, belly by wandering around. What even is an energy seed? Come to think of it. Alright, that's interesting little side effect. Er. Eating it restores your HP quite a lot and increases max HP, so we definitely want you. This is interesting music. I will raise my speed. Well, that's rude. Gabriel, you should not have done that. <laughs> At least I got my barrage. Interesting music that's playing. Also need to be suspicious of this guy here because he is not a full ally by the fact that he wasn't picking up anything, so. God damn it. Oh, and that also hit me. Well, that's rude.
How dare you? Rude, rude game. Give you your proteins. Well, not proteins. The protein is for me. Give you your calciums. Then raise my proteins. He's very rude that so many of these motherfuckers have ranged attacks. Hopefully my barrage can carry me. Ah, band seed. I forget what you do. Oh, yeah. So useless to me. Hmm, an Emera up orb. Once again, we'll use if comes to be handy. Another Emera up orb. Hmm. We converge upon you. Jerk. Hmm, status mirror. I'm just gonna increase my speed. That seems to be the most important thing. Don't want to miss any of my moves. box. This late into the game. Maybe all the boxes... Well, even the boxes didn't seem to give me, like, anything great. So, I don't know. But I wonder if this is a dungeon that I should rush through or should try to get like, resources in. Might as well pick those up just in case. Get barraged, idiot. Oh, I'm just gonna smack it from here. Haha, <laughs> fool. Your agility means nothing. We'll give a super critical to you as well. Oh, shit. I'm gonna try and... Yeah, flinch. Because I don't want those things to do their room clearing bullshit. Well, not room clearing, but... Their line of annihilation. Oh, no one is holding the other looplets. How dare you, game. Give to the boy. Let's see. Well, that's annoying. Just <laughs> multiple activations. Oh, is it too far away? I'm a fool. Yeah, it could still hit me. How dare. Expert, we shall just use. Well, that's just extra annoying. And yet, we have a tiny reviver seed here. <laughs> Didn't even need the little, like, protection of having him be a, a shield. I'm already poisoned. Oh, 
Or at least the artillery fire brigade went well. And now I punch you. You damn fiend. What? Some evolved Pokemon are very strong, so be careful. Keep in mind that some enemy Pokemon can evolve. Evolution also occur in some dungeons. Well, that's mean to throw this in here. What? What the fuck? You gonna move twice, you asshole? Fuck off! I hate that there's, like, no real good location I can go. I guess I'll get in the way. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Like, if... Gra like, if nothing can actually happen about that, right? It just seems like a weird thing to be like, oh... One of your team members are fainted. Which makes me think that if you went ahead without him, bad things would happen. I don't know. It's weird. At least they're giving a bunch of Reviver Seeds in here as well. just very mean that these things seem to level up and of course I was lacking just enough help for that to do it fuck off game You're just being a cunt right now please fuck off Because I can use that energy seed. It's in here somewhere. Why do so many of these assholes have goddamn ranged attacks? And why did that make me confused? You're being a cunt. Gabriel, you can act. That's not what I wanted to do, game. God damn you. You're just being annoying. I'm just getting annoyed by this constant spam of ranged moves at me. And look, another asshole is coming in. I wonder what they'll be. A ranged move user? Actually, no, we're not gonna revive you. I don't like this dungeon. It's kind of a cunt. Gabriel, why? I don't like the team movement in this game sometimes. Because it sometimes just doesn't make sense. It's like, I'm gonna move in this area too. It's mostly just all these guys having ranged attacks that's just being annoying. Uh, why did you get a crit game? Why are you being an asshole? Stop it. I'm gonna go to team tactics. Come on game, let me go to team tactics. Follow me. Won't be as good in combat, but the game has decided that combat is bad today. Definitely want that. Tell where enemies are. Power boost X is good. Hmm. And a 
course, this guy is going to be following us, so got to get in his way. Got to use the big ears to... All right, enemies are coming this way. Of course, an enemy spawns here. How very fun game. Spawning an enemy. Ooh. Couldn't spawn it anywhere else, could ya? Just had to spawn it in a place that would be noticeably bad for me. I call this shenanigans, game. That is far too convenient for you. Alright, now that enemy is going the opposite way. We'll take this opportunity. Power boost Y, good for the boy. I'd be less annoyed by all this if it weren't for the fact that it didn't really feel like there was much opportunity to, like, grind. Because the game usually just said, no, you have to continue with the story. With, like, dedicated, now you can go do things like days. It did, like, it felt more, like, railroaded. Uh, well, let's see what happens if we move ahead. <laughs> so we just lose him eternally. But he wasn't that good anyway. Huh, interesting. Didn't even know you were there. God damn you. What the? Okay, the teammate movement is annoying in this game. Why? Why does teammate want to go there? I set you to follow me. Yeah, prioritize following their leader, which is not functioning like any other thing. So there's basically no good, hey, don't do stupid stuff option for your allies. That's fun. Fine. Let's go together, because that was the least, like, movement annoying thing out of them all. Why did he keep moving directly near the enemy when that was not what I wanted him to do? Oh, you moved in diagonally, so we're going to have your teammate just be stupid. What fun. Because I swear that never happened in the previous games. It was just frustrating to have it happen here. And I will increase my elixir. Come on. Why are all the enemies in this goddamn tunnel? Come on. It was like, you don't deserve to hit your enemies. Only enemies get to hit you. Alright, another super critical. This will give another one to you. dust, but we might as well. It's at least free stats. Well, that's just fucking annoying game. Game, please. Fucking cease. 
And I wanted to swap places with my ally, but the game said you don't get to do that. You're confused. Game is an asshole. Just entirely. Speed, considering the amount of times we missed my first moves on these assholes. I do not like the coincidental timing of how much the game is utterly annihilating me. But I see you down there. With that berry power that is coming to be mine soon, we are going to hunt you. I can get berry power. Now let's get the hell out of here after collecting these dust. I sure do love <laughs> missing my attacks. I'll take over. Luckily, it's a very low dragon rage. Not much to worry about. The max elixir, give it to you. Nom on the big ears. And get out of here. Try to get to the second checkpoint. you have a corner cutter, because you're an asshole. Oh, we got an iron. Where did we get an iron? I have basically nothing that won't just immediately lead to my death anyway. Maybe a blast seed. Well, it's my last blast seed, so I shouldn't waste it, but I do have a petrify wand. So at least maybe buy me time. Status immunity isn't that super good. Raises defense. Let's move along. at all. Except maybe this. Nope. Oh, hey. And then there's just a conga line of assholes coming along into this room. Og, I hate. Why do they just decide this is going to be the asshole dungeon? That should have hit your ally. Oh, of course you would.
Just God, they just decide this one would be just a cunt of a dungeon. Well, time for a restart. Because fuck you, give me my reviver seeds back, you asshole. You're just goddamn artillery firing asshole of a dungeon. Have to do all the things again, because the game was an asshole. Two speed increases. Two special attack increases. Yeah, and if BM, like, gets knocked out, we're leaving him for dead. He, he gives nothing. He goes down just as quickly. Which definitely makes me feel like that was in a design intention for this goddamn dungeon. Ba -ba -ba. Hmm. Let's see. Revive all orb is useless. Like, these might be useful. Blast seed, I don't think is going to be as useful. Let's see. Again, definitely want to bring... We weren't going through that many apples, so maybe leave you behind. Definitely bring our two Reviva seeds. And more tiny Revivas. And then I think even... More orange berries. And then... Save, so we're prepared for another asshole run. It's just overall, it would be less annoying if the game explicitly gave you, like, actual times to grind, which it never really did. It never gave you, like, proper times to grind like the other ones did. Just lots of, oh, hey, go this. You try to do something else? No, you can't do that. Just lots of that kind of story. Beats. Making it so you can't really... <laughs> it's like, here are the five times you can actually grind. And now we're gonna punish you for not knowing that. <laughs> Use warp stay away wands? Can't really do that since all of the enemies are artillery. They need to be right in front of you to be able to use wands. Can't exactly use a wand from range, as far as I'm aware. But yeah, this is definitely a get to the the stairs and run. I thought that was what the like the the wand expert thing was. It expanded its use. Cause I don't it like I wish it actually had like a thing. Maybe it does. Then it like uh I'll have to look at their descriptions. Because I don't think they actually tell you, like, their range, which would have been nice, because I thought they were all just right in front of you. Ones. No, not that one. Well, I guess that would have worked. Because Petrify Wand, I feel like, would be a right in front of you. No, it doesn't mention range at all. I just always assumed that it was a right in front of you thing, else it feels like it would be busted sometimes. Wand Expert makes their range like Geo Pebbles. Hmm, so it's more like homing, I guess. Hmm, then maybe it is a good idea to look over the wands, because I have been collecting wands. Hmm, maybe Confuse Wand would be nice, because I have Petrify. Hmm. If I. I wish that the. Ba ba da ba. 
the wands had like, hey, this is like its range. Because I always thought that it was just right in front of you type thing. And that's why I thought they weren't as good. Hmm. I guess we'll deposit the orbs. Well, actually, we might grab, like, uh, one Petrify Orb. And then I guess... Let's see. What's Pounce? Makes you jump at it. And he never will also jump. I think Warp would be better. Just so I... Oh, I forgot. Need to... Bring all the charges with me. Then let's see about orbs, because it would be good to have a single... There are a bunch of enemies around me, need to make them all... So I guess uh, one petrify orb. And then a save. Like, I think that back at the school slow burn, there should have been a day about wands. Unless there was, and I just forgot. But I never felt like there was anything really in-depth about wands. And since they're charged, it's like, it felt into that thing of like, this could be important, but then I'll never use it. But yep, this is a still bolt to the exit type thing. Well, the animation shooting a ball of light forward, I've only ever used it point blank. Assumed that it was point blank, so I only ever used it point blank. So I never actually saw it being a, a ball. And fuck you, game. Your speed is bullshit. I should be the speediest motherfucker. Let that Dratini go by. Or not Dratini. Well, it's evolved from Dratini, so we'll we'll just say that we're calling it Dratini Dr in, a, in a mean way. Oh yeah, we also need to equip the special attack blooplet. <laughs> Basically, you made an assumption never tried otherwise. Yeah, because it all because like. I think I made that assumption primarily due to, like, uh, the, what are they called, like, the spikes and stuff from the past games. So I never really thought them to be, like, actually good. Shove. Then I shove again. Shoving is a nice game mechanic. One thing that is slightly annoying about having non-partner, but like traveling with you Pokemon is I can't see their health. Slightly bothersome that. <laughs> but the spikes and pebbles range too. I meant that more in like the like what I psychologically expected out of them. Cause like the Pebbles and uh, spikes are ones that I never used a lot and thought that they would be like the same thing. Oh, here's this game's like version of the pebbles. And I'm just like never going to use them. Lullaby, definitely good. Well, that's just mean. I'm still annoyed by traps being <laughs> you have to basic attack eternally. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> We're going to conveniently give you a uh, poison trap to die to. Game is being cheatsy, I say. Eternally cheatsy. Calcium for the boy. One Carbos for me.
page, just like with the past games that had spikes and pebbles. They were just like, ooh, neat kind of thing. So if I ever got, like, pebbles and had room, maybe I'd bring them with me. But otherwise, I usually wanted to have my bag space be used for other things that I felt was more important. I guess toughness wouldn't be bad here. And I just thought that the wands would be about the same kind of thing. A little neat thing, but are pretty much just, ooh, cool, but not good kind of thing. Huzzah, take that. Hmm, we're just gonna leave you to sleep. Don't want to get into too many fights, I can't end quickly. And knowing the game, it would go like, haha, you missed. You're not speedy enough. Ah, there's so many poison traps down here. Yeah, because wands, like you said, wands are like orbs if they were stackable, but like, yeah, only like a, a single target thing. You trade being able to affect an entire room for affecting a single, but being able to do it far more often. But I just did not know that it was ranged. Because to me, I always thought that it was just like, ooh, I'm waving it over them and not sending out a magical blast. Because again, I thought that was part of the thing since it only affected a singular Pokemon. I kind of thought that was part of the trade-off thing. Orbs can affect the entire room with one go. With a wand, I thought it was, oh, you needed to hit them at the, like, very outset. But I was wrong. Well, first let's see what you... Increases HP. I will give it to Gabriel. Get his HP up a little bit. So I definitely think that there should have been a school day dedicated to the ins and outs, basics of the wands. To be like, they are ranged. Then again, they're not like a super duper like major important gameplay aspect. But it's just that uh, they're new. And I just didn't know what they could actually do. Luckily, it's just another shark. Sharpedo. A very speedy one, apparently. First thing first, we will eat apple, then go on to the next floor. Well, at least we have another <laughs> honorary ba ba ba. Honorary Orenberry in there. And then I'll get in the way. I should have gone, di gone diagonally. If I went diagonally, I would have been in punch in range for him. Hmm, 
Poison Guard, raises HP. Let's see. I punch you. <laughs> That's our first randomly gotten gold bar, I think. Hilarious. Hmm. I think you're only really at risk of being hit by, like, ranged attacks, and they're all going to be special attacks, I believe. Another random iron. The timeline is repeating. Let's see, where are those one the singular plane seed? Nom you, get out of here, and immediately book it to the end. Hmm, another toughness. Hmm, ah, the Emerald disappears after you survive an attack. Otherwise, raise a special defense, give that to the boy. Yeah, get confused, jerk. <laughs> Zoop on on. Get into as few fights as possible. Yeah, let you get in close. I bite. Get lullaby. Flinch to your sleep end, you idiot. And an energy seed, huzzah. That'll be nice. And then just get out of here. Another toughness. We give it to the boy so he can survive more special hits. Status mirror. That rarely happens. Increases speed for me. And a barrage. That is... Uh, let's give it to the boy. Give him a chance to barrage enemies. Because I've, I've never really noticed... Like... The difference between one barrage and two barrage... Just in case, I'm going to petrify you in case I miss again. That way there was a chance that he would stay petrified. You know what? I'm just going to launch a petrify down this hallway. You stay down there. You leave us alone. If I knew that wands were ranged, I would have been spamming them so much I probably wouldn't have any for the end game. Man, Petrify lasts for forever. A burn guard down here in this economy. And it was only just a super critical down there, so don't care. We were like one floor away from getting to the midway point <laughs> from last time. Phew, we seem pretty far down now. I can see it. That's the exit up ahead. If we go through there, we'll reach the prehistoric ruins. Let's go. I think we only died like twice down there. This definitely feels like the ru ruins that uh, we saw the few times when we cut to Dedene. Actually, I think we only cut to them once. This is it, the entrance to the prehistoric ruins. In other words, the very bottom of the ocean. How how the hell these ruins managed to get to the bottom of the ocean and not just become flooded is impressive. It's almost like the ruins themselves were like perfectly constructed and the land underneath them gave way to the ocean. This is... How could a whole continent with this kind of culture just sink? It happened a long time ago. But now we need to hurry onward. Nuzleaf and his lackeys aren't here now. This is our chance to strike at Dark Matter. Wait! Behem, when Dark Matter lost control of you, you came back to yourself, right? 
when that happened, what happened to your memories of when you were controlled? Did you forget everything? Or do you still remember it all? I... I don't really want to remember the things that I did when I was being controlled. But then you do remember! If you do, then there's something I've got to ask. Why did Nuzleaf lie to Neon? Gabriel! Come on, BM. You worked together with Nuzleaf to trick Neon, right? You really want to know? But you still don't even believe me, do you? You still think that I might be bringing you here as a sort of trap, don't you? Well, he hit the nail on the head. So you really want to make me tell, even though you don't even trust me? Yeah, I know it's not very smart, but I still have to ask. I mean, you guys went to so much extra work to make this elaborate ruse. Why do it? I just can't wrap my head around it. I see. Yes, it might seem strange to you, but no, I won't tell you. What? Why not? Because I don't want to. I don't want to say it. Come on, if you know the truth, just tell me! I can't believe you're being such a brat! A brat? Fine then. I'll tell you just one thing. The reason that Nuzleaf tricked your friend, Neon, it was because of who you are and what you might remember. So is this another explorer situation instead of a rescue team in GTI situation? So like, are we technically like a pre-existing human who like did things? Or are, like, at first I thought this was just going to be Rescue Team GTI. We fell to this world maybe for purpose, but Explorers actually had a backstory to a degree. I wonder what this is. I wonder what's going on then. Because I think Nuzleaf did mention something about that, our memories or something. Who Neon is? What I might remember? You still had some memories of who you were when you first came to this world. But then, no, no. I'm sorry, I can't say any more. Please don't make me. I'm afraid we wasted some of the little precious time we have. We should hurry onward. Are you serious? You've got to tell us more than that. I'm afraid you're out of time. What? Is this all because of who I am? Nuzleaf singled me out because of what I might remember. I wonder what that actually means, though. Who are we? Hmm, we don't really need the Stun Seed, Emra up. I guess we'll take keep two Petrify Orbs just in case. And... Out of Paranoia, I shall bring along uh, a few more Tiny Reviver Seeds. Just in case. I don't really want to remember the time when I was being controlled. I'm sorry, but please, just don't ask. Why do you think BM won't tell us anymore? I guess we just have to move on for now. You take the lead, Neon. I do wonder what that means. <laughs> Insert meme clip of little child saying, Wait a minute! Who are you? I only have ever heard the, like, wait a minute part. I never even knew there was, like, a second. Who are you? Well, now that we're out of water hell, hopefully things will be easier, especially now that I know that I can actually use wands. Of course you would. Get paralyzed, fool. Hmm, so maybe I need to do that more. Use my Petrify Wand to set up... Ah, of course you have a high damage move, you jerk. Okay, I think, uh... I'm gonna warp you away. And, uh... Once again, I shall petrify you so that if I miss... Well, first things first, Screech. Okay, miss. 
Smack. Hmm, I saw a power boost X, I think, get picked up by somebody. Big ears! So now we know where the enemies are. And luckily with Petrify... Ooh! If I really wanted to, I could probably have a little bit of a tech with Petrify. Ah, I think it's you. I think... I think you have the... Ah, Power Post Y. Still very good. And that is all I want. We are getting out of here. I just knew that an enemy had a Emera I did like. So now we're moving on. Oh, hey! A girder. Of course. Well, I guess a tactics meeting. Wait there. Increases HP. Oh, but of course, Behem isn't gonna play by those rules. He's gonna be a little jerk and run away. Well, he's having a good time. He's managing to survive. Even Behem is surviving. A Blast Seed, that's not bad. Do we have a... Yeah, Plain Seed to swap out for it? Map, bye-bye. Type Bulldozer, I'll take that. A little annoying that... Like, uh... The tactics meeting doesn't work for, like, the guest Pokemon. Well, that's not gonna help you, you fool. Hmm, Barrage Guard increases special defense. Hmm. I think maybe me, because there's lots of fighting type in here. Honestly... You, uh, with uh, the amount of fighting types, having another Psybeam won't be that, like, bad to have. Hmm, super critical. Might as well take while I can. Confuse Wand. I already have Petrify and Warp. Lullaby. Hell yeah. Let's see, I'm just trying to think of what I should do. Smack you. Yeah, get lullabied, idiot. Clairvoyance! Definitely good. Hmm, super critical. We'll give it to the boy. Well, that's very mean. If it was anything else, but no. I will use just an Orenberry. To increase my HP a little bit. Yeah, I was waiting for one of you guys to blast him so that he wouldn't be able to activate his counter. Hell yeah. Another super critical, uh... Let's see... Probably should have brought an Emera up, Orb. Ah, darn it. 
This is not to do A. With the clairvoyance, I'm going to try and beeline it to the good things. A dizzying stare. We'll give it to the boy. And a guard boost. There are a lot of physicals. Honestly, super critical. Because I'm more likely to get hit than get a crit. And now we're going to beeline it to the exit. Sure, there's Emra Dust there. Well, actually... Good job, team. I punch you from afar. How oh, rude. <laughs> Luckily, your quick attack is very, very low compared to your energy ball. Hmm. Ah, good job. As an aside, it's been mildly bugging me all playthrough. You do realize the power boost X and Y raise the power of moves and not the attack special attack stats when equipped blueprint, right? Like, I figured it was something like that. Like, oh, these raise the respective power of these moves. I just knew that, like, this is good for special attack, put it on the boy. This is good for physical attack, put it on me. Just very simple things. Not overthinking it. There doesn't seem to be any items on this floor, so we move along. Oh, I see a clear path up ahead! That one was much easier than the stinking submerged hellhole. Let's go! And yep, this is going to be where we see our friends uh, frozen dead bodies. What is this? Mawile, Buzel, Dedene, Funnelby, everyone. So this is where. BM! That's right. We turned them into stone. I mean, we knew that. We saw them in the hell. But now is no time for grief. Ah! The tree of life still lies ahead of us. We have to move on. Everyone! I know you're suffering, but wait for us! We will definitely come back for you! No matter what! Alright. Huh. Bunch of worms. Alright, I'm going to... Well, actually, because he could have a vacuum punch. So I'm going to... Petrify you. Come up. Then I shall... Punch you. And let my allies blast you. Perfect. Ah, just a looplet. All right, uh, there are a bunch of enemies coming in, so petrify. Petrify you as well. This also allows us to... Okay, Slumber Wand is actually better than Tunnel Wand, at least to me, because I need to affect enemies. Can 
Come on. Come on, you bastard. <laughs> Immediately get put to sleep. to give myself a normal elixir. Now we just need to find the exit because nothing else seems to be super duper. The boy went somewhere else for some reason. Why game? How do you get lost from us? Did he somehow become slow? And I didn't notice? Whenever the characters do that, they're like, they're right behind me. I turn around, they just, they're gone. What the hell? Hey, a wand expert. Hmm. But do I want to sacrifice a placement? Because Big Ears is nice because it allows me to, like, decide encounters better. Hello, Neon. Hello, hello! After a bit of a hard time, we had our first having to reset, mostly because of water artillery from bastards, and me now learning to use wands. Hmm. I guess... Because I guess if it, like, uh, let me see. Wand expert, it gives it... Yeah, spread out like a fan. The number of uses sometimes stay the same. Since we're using up a bunch of them, I guess it wouldn't hurt to replace guard boost. Man, paralyzed and confused. Life hates you. Mac. Ow. Hey, do you want to chat about Pokemon trivia? You can always throw out some trivia if you think it's interesting. Especially because it's pertinent since this is Pokemon. Oh yeah, we were going to eat an apple. Go ahead and petrify wand you. So that I can get up close, smack you, and then my allies can get a volley on you a bit. Thank you, lullaby. Hmm, burn guard just raises HP. Should raise the boy a little bit. Shows a poor decision. Hmm. I guess because you guys might have a quick attack, I shall petrify wand you. Getting close. Screech. Slap you. <laughs> Today is not your day. Neither is uh, is it Gabriel's, because he keeps missing. Decoy seed, not the greatest thing in the world. I will come down here, gather up this Emera dust, and move along. Since it's increased the range... I should be able to blast you. You fool. Why are you so fast? Please die. Hmm. 
Another big ears. Increases HP. Raise mine. <laughs> Another gold bar. We're getting all the gold bars now. At least I actually used it a lot. Oh, hey, a bunch of Petrify Wand. Hell yeah. Always nice to get wands that I actually use. Alright. Gonna Petrify Wand you. Getting close. And Force Bomb. In a way, it's almost beneficial to attack first instead of screeching. Because... I have the chance of putting them to sleep. Whereas if I screech at them, they'll usually wake up from their petrify. Although it'd be funny if you screech at them and then they fall into slumber due to lullaby. That would be a funny interaction. Doubt it would actually work, but it would be hilarious. Alright, first things first is petrify so that your buddy has to go around. <laughs> sure, it hit me, but it also killed his buddy. Although that also uh, sapped experience from me. Sadness. Along. Eh, not that way. First things first, petrify, so I have a better surround on you. Well, hey, exactly what I like. But what do I want to replace? Uh, dizzying stare, I'd say. Then next, we will... Elixir the boy. And just in case this is the... Like, f final floor, somehow. Doubtful. I'm going to wait until we get to the next floor before... Eating an apple. Alright, first things first, I will petrify you so I can get the other things. This should just increase HP. We should increase yours. Intimidator could also be nice. We haven't run into many things here that are currently, like, outside of my typing. So, honestly, mm, but at the same time, Lullaby is good, Wand Expert is good, so Clairvoyance is nice. Okay, I guess, uh, we'll quickly just swap with one of the, this single plane seed. And uh, now we're just going to beat you up. We'll go ahead and eat this plain seed, get some use out of it. Oh, you're another bastard, aren't you? You're petrified. How are you that, that fast, little man? We need to eat apple. Intimidator is very nice. So, I honestly, we'll get rid of type bulldozer. Hope I don't come to regret it. Hmm. Ah, wrong thing. Need to go to 
tactics meeting. Sure, Behem will run about, but oh well. Wait there. Oh, hey, Barrage. Hmm. Honestly, I'll give Barrage to the boy. Well, hell was happening there. Some of the aforementioned Pokemon trivia. Okay, so we all know the grass type is the weakest Pokemon type ever. It has too many type weaknesses. I don't know about the logistics of that. I've always been terrible with typings. I keep forgetting things about them. Their interactions and stuff. Uh, do I want to get rid of something? Wand Expert is nice. Just to... Hmm. I guess maybe... But the enemies here are kind of dangerous, so having big ears is good. Hmm. Lullaby is also nice because these enemies are tanky. Honestly, at this point, Clairvoyance is the one that I can give up the most. Would have been hilarious if it gave me another clairvoyance. It's like, do you really want to get rid of me? But yeah, having big ears allows me to know where enemies are coming. Calcium raises special attack. We give it to the boy. Now you want to go to the bag. Honestly, Slumber Wand. And a tiny Reviver Seed. Is there anything we want to give up? That Pekka Berry. We'll give up the Pekka Berry. Booyah. Thank you, Barrage. Hmm, Clutch Performer. Increases speed? Definitely want that. God damn you. I swear, there's been an abundance of poison traps in this dungeon. <laughs> oh, you're not good at rem uh, remembering Pokemon types? I'm not good at remembering, like, their interactions. Like, sometimes I'll just be, like, annoyed that... S well, sometimes I remember them mostly because they annoy me, like Steel being powerful against Psychic, which I can only guess is a joke on the, oh, Tenfoil is against the mind-reading. But it's just like, ah, it still bothers me. What about the spoon? Bending spoon with mind. Steel is just big spoon. Should at least be neutral. But other times it's just like, I forget randomly, like, oh, like I think psychic types uh, get hit hard by bug types. And then other times I forget that, like, dark types take extra damage from fighting types. And it's only by, like, playing a bunch more Pokemon games right now this year that now they're actually starting to stick. Then other times there are types I hardly run into, so I'm just like, oh, Ice does that. Did not know. Looks like we've come pretty far in. We still haven't reached the Tree of Life. It is a giant tree that is at the bottom of the ocean. I think it's allowed to have, be a bit mysterious. No, but we're nearly there. If we can just make it through this area. Ah, there, I can see the way. Come with me. Is this where you're going to betray us? I still want to know what the hell was up with Esper. Is Nuzleaf good is... Actually? Or, I don't know. Everything's weird. Then again, like... Because apparently, both of us, Gabriel and me, have mysterious pasts. Nuzleaf tricked me because of my memories I used to have. 
and Gabriel we still know nothing about. This place is big, all right, but where's the Tree of Life? I don't see anything like a tree. Is it really here? Well, this is odd. It should be right here. That's what I'd heard. Well, they are big ruins. Let's keep going a bit farther. Maybe it's just farther in. He did, like, twinge. So is he being, like, retaken over by dark matter? Or is he... Oh, I just had a thought. What if dark matter released him? And gave him, like, false memories and stuff. So he goes, oh, I've been used by dark matter to lure us into a trap earnestly. Maybe. Well, let's see. Huh? Be him? What's the matter? Really? That's it? <laughs> ah, nope, he's just been a liar liar this entire time. <laughs> no way! He really is. You know what, BHM? I may not have trusted you much, but I did believe you in you a little bit. I thought you might be telling us the truth about Neon's memory and all. But the whole time, you've just been leading us on, is that it? What would you hope to gain? Gain? Nothing at all. What? But this place is a trap, isn't it? That's right. A perfect trap. For you two. And for me, too. What? I don't care if you believe me or not, but the one who told me that the Tree of Life was here was Nuzleaf. Oh, so he just was laughing mad because he realized he'd been had. So, maybe, like, there's still the chance that Dark Matter might take over him again, but I guess my little, on the, like, five seconds into the future theory that Dark Matter let him go just to lead us into a trap is true. It was after I'd broken free of Dark Matter's control. What? He must have already realized it, that I would betray them sooner or later. And that's why he lied, telling me that the Tree of Life was here. You... you can't mean... <laughs> I do thank you for explaining it for me. That's... that voice. It's just like you reckoned, Behem. There ain't no Tree of Life here. You... Rotten, filthy traitor! Gabriel, Neon, I sure never did believe that you two would figure a way out of being turned to stone. I don't know how you wrangled it, but I think I'll just send y'all back to the Vordlands right now! Nuzleaf! You sure had us all fooled, huh? Neon, and me, and everyone in the whole village! Why do it? You want to know why? You serious, kid? You mean you ain't heard it from the Behem right there beside you? What now? Well, we did ask, but all he would tell us is that it had something to do with Neon's memories. Oh, so you haven't heard at all? I just went and figured you'd know the whole sorry tale by now. Oh, so that's it, huh? Didn't want to admit to what you'd done? Sure enough. Oh, this is interesting music. No one in his right mind would. <laughs> then you just let me do the talking. The reason, the only reason Neon here ain't had no memory all this time is because that behem right there went and erased it all. You did? You erased Neon's memories? Neon, you still knew who you were when you first came along to this here world. Before you lost your memories, you even tried battling me and my pals here. While we were all fighting, though, you got hit with a dose of old Behem psychic power. And plum forgot who you were. And so that's what we hatched all so that's when we hatched our little plan. That's when we decided to trick Neon. So at first I was brought here, and probably told by whoever brought me here that I needed to stop Dark Matter and who my enemies were. But Behem and Nuzleaf got to me first, and after they knocked my memories out, they figured instead of just putting a stop to me, that they would use me to open up the Luminous Spring so that there was no chance of stopping them in the future, probably. But, but why? 
It was all to get our hands on that luminous water, of course. No one but a human could bring the barrier on that spring. That's why them ancient Pokemon had set it up to be in Neon here. Well, Neon was summoned here by the spirit of an ancient Pokemon and was brought right through the bounds of time and space, all in an effort to save this world. So Neon was brought here to save the world? By some ancient Pokemon? It was all planned by them ancient Pokemon that had seen what the future held. It would be, be hilarious if that was Kirim. But we managed to find out that there would be a human brought to this here world. And a human could help Pokemon turn to stone return to normal with luminous water. That'd be a real problem for us if that started happening. So we decided to strike first and before any pesky human could break that barrier. And we headed out with a plan to put Neon there to an end. What cutscene? You remember the spot? There by the waterfall? Never wondered why you were there. That's where we fought you. And during that battle, Neon, you lost all your memories thanks to a real fine psychic hit. This music is very good. Soon as I heard that from the Behem there, I knew just what to do. The plan just popped into my head. Sure, the luminous water was a real pain, but if we could absorb its power, we could get even stronger than ever. All I had to do was guarantee that the barrier would be broken while I was there. And that's what I needed Neon, not as an enemy, but as an ally. And that's why I started that fool's masquerade. Whoa! What's the deal all of a sudden? First I had them be him attack you, so Neon would fear him as enemies. Then all I had to do was appear on the scene. Whoa, what in the world? Ah, I'm scared. And while we ran from them villains together, Neon naturally came to trust me. You see that there lake? That there little village on the shore is where I live. Serene Village. And all I had to do was get Neon to come back to Serene Village with me. Everything went swimmingly. What? Up Revelation Mountain? How many, t how many ways can I tell you to keep it quiet, child? I'm going in secret, naturally, so I'll thank you to keep your voice down. Sure, I didn't succeed in getting you all up Revelation Mountain on my first try, but... <laughs> I reckon the time has come. I finally done broke the barrier. The barrier over the spring. But in the end, I got me on there to break the barrier on the spring, all right. I was able to dry up all the luminous water and take its power for my own. And that's why... It was all just to get the luminous water? Yeah, and I sure do thank you for your help with that, fools. But I'm afraid you've done all you can for me, and now you ain't nothing but loose ends. Especially Neon there. You were brought here to save this world, after all. So you're about the biggest problem there could be to have still running around. Might be this room looks a new rock... Might be this room looks like an irregular old room to y'all. But that's where you'd be wrong. Any Pokemon that get turned into stone right here in this special room get dropped straight down into the deepest pit at the bottom of the Voidlands. The deepest part of the Voidlands? You know what I'm talking about at least, don't you, Behem? You well know how frightening that place is. Once you're down there in the pits of the Voidlands, you ain't never coming back up. Not even you, Neon. Finally get it, don't you? Why I tricked y'all into coming here? Uh, don't give up yet, be him. We all worked together and some made it out of the Voidlands. We promised our friends that we would save them. So we're not going to just sit here and let ourselves be turned to stone. Uh, our friends are counting on us. Your friends? <laughs> well, ain't that precious. Who do you think it was who helped us get y'all down here and trapped you? Well, who do you think y'all think was the mastermind behind all our plans? 
Looks like you're in luck. Because here comes one of your friends right now. Esper? Gabriel? Neon? Hello. The fact is that when I was hiding and saw you and Neon being turned to stone, I was discovered by Mr. Nuzleaf and forced to help him. He told me that I didn't want to be turned to stone myself. That if I didn't want to be turned to stone myself, that I had to help him. I certainly don't want to be sent to the Voidlands. So that's why I went and joined sides with Mr. Nuzleaf. Sorry about that. That can't be. Esper here's been helping us all keep in touch ever since then, you see. While pretending to be helping Ampharos and them with the same, naturally. Thanks to that, we knew every move those fools make. It's given us a real upper hand in this fight. If you knew their every move, how haven't you turned them to stone yet is my question, but who knows. Maybe it's Ampharos wandering around blindly. His dashing wanderingness saves them, maybe. Hey, you. You traitor. If you want to come back over to our side right about now, I'll let your little slip here pass. How about it? You think you could take on Neon in the other run? Gabriel, Neon, I'm sorry. VM, no! I thought I wanted to save the world, but... But even more than that, I don't want to go there. Not the Voidlands. I can't... I can't face it. I'm too afraid. <laughs> Would you look at that? There's your friendship for you. The friends you thought you could trust, and even the ones you're none too sure about. They're all the same in the end. Ugh. Having faith in someone else might rightly give you the courage to keep on fighting. But how about now when you ain't got nobody left to believe in? There ain't nothing left for you in this world. So you be good little pawns, and let me turn you all back into stone! That's quite far enough! So is that- oh, Celebi?! Ooh! I wonder if Espero is actually a double traitor this entire time then. I can't use Esper to find Amphros when even he doesn't know where he is. Exactly. Who- Who in the world?! It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh wait, no it's not! Ampharos at your service! Now, Celebi! So I, want, I guess that's maybe why... <laughs> so we left to be him there! And since we brought Esper with us, I'm going to assume double agent. So it's extra funny. In a way, through Nuzli threatening Esper to help us, he kind of trusted her in the sense that he thought he could trust her to do what he wanted, and then she betrayed him. That's kind of hilarious. We did it. It actually worked. Yeah, that was close, though. Ampharos, Jirachi, why are you here? Wait, where are we even? A certain island to the south. What matters most is that we are far from the prehistoric ruins. So rest easy. Um... Sorry, who are you? This is Celebi. He- oh, he, huh. He has been a friend of mine for many years. Ampharos just meeting all the legendaries. He has been helping me investigating the current turn of events. Celebi? Wait, isn't that... huh? That's right! Neon, do you remember back when we went to the Air Continent? Celebi was the legendary that Latios and Latios were trying to reach. <laughs> Ampharos with the sick burn on Nuzleaf. Not just a double agent, a triple agent! Insert sound clip. Oh, baby, a triple! Time Travel Lake is in the middle of the forest, and the mythical Pokémon Celebi. That's why everybody's all in lather over the rumors again, and wondering if it might have come to Celebi next. My will leave this place. If Celebi is not here, then my presence serves no purpose. That's why I remember that name! Celebi is the Pokémon that Entei was looking for back then! But he was not there. I was probably still traveling through time just then. Traveling through time? Celebi is the time travel Pokémon, after all. He has the ability to move through time, to visit either the past or the future. He can? 
Just like the ancient writing we found around the sealed spring, the truth behind the events now unfolding around us seems to be rooted in the past. Oh yeah! We actually learned a whole lot more after we turned to stone there! About the Tree of Life and Dark Matter and all that stuff! Then that should save us some time. I was asked to look around into all this by Entei quite some time ago, in fact. He wanted to come, uh, he wanted me to investigate the Pokemon being turned to stone. Entei did? Yes, Entei may be rather frightening, and he surely does tend to rub you the wrong way. Harsh, but true. But he was serious about this. He felt this world was in real danger. He wasn't wrong. Things are looking pretty bad right now. You do know that the Tree of Life is withering because of dark matter? Yeah. And do you know what will happen if the Tree of Life dies? The spinning of our planet will begin to slow, causing us all to slowly be drawn toward the sun. So the sun isn't coming closer. We're falling to the death of doom. Huh? To the sun? Quite so. Eventually, our world will be swallowed up by the sun. So we went from explorers, where the sun never shone, to a super mystery dungeon, where the sun is going to shine way too much. To be perfectly blunt, this planet is already being pulled closer to the sun. That's why it has been so hot lately. So it wasn't just our imagination. I thought that the sun seemed larger than usual in the sky, but really? Just having everyone turn into stone was enough to, of a crisis to deal with. If this planet gets swallowed by the sun as well... The song is really good, by the way. It's hard to pay attention to it and speak at the same time. Then that's it. Clearly, we must do something. But before we rush into the battle, we need more information. That's why we had Celebi investigate the events of the past while Jirachi and myself looked into what was happening in the present world. Then we had Esper compile all the information that we were sending her. B but Esper has been working for Nuzleaf all this time. He threatened her and... Did you really believe that? I suppose I could have just left, uh, let Nuzleaf turn me to stone when he threatened to do so, but that wouldn't have been very interesting, so I pretended to fear him and subscribed to his side's beliefs. <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually kind of funny that Esper is the... Then again, it kind of makes sense. Esper did fake falling asleep or, like, getting knocked out by the Litwick's horrifying presence. So it does make sense that she would be the one to able to trick Nuzleaf. That allowed me to pass along information about Ampharos to Nuzleaf while also keeping Ampharos abreast of what Nuzleaf was doing. I suppose I'm what you might call a double agent. At any rate, threats don't work on me. Esper, you're frightening sometimes. Don't you recall when we caught Behem? I want to hear what Amphros thinks. Esper, can you reach him? I understand. I'll try to reach him now. Bzz, bzz. Did you get to him, Esper? It's no good. I can't seem to reach him. But I do know what the problem could be. In fact, I did reach Amphros at that time. I told him that you and Neon had returned from being turned to stone, and I filled him in about Behem. Then Ampharos said that I was to pretend that I hadn't been able to reach him, so that so that was why I acted the way I did. And then we just left poor Behem to get turned to stone. Utterly annihilated. So, you just let us walk into that trap? Sorry about that. I couldn't have imagined that things would have turned out quite the way they did. But thanks to the, what Nuzleaf said there in the deepest part of the prehistoric ruins, we've been able to connect some very crucial dots. It's time that we had a little talk. You need to know what Jirachi and I learned, and what Celebi saw in the past. There's a lot you need to hear about it. Are you ready? Is it going to turn out that we need to go to the past, and our Harmony Scarves are going to activate, and we're going to be like legendary heroes in the past, and Celebi saw us, and like, ah, we need to make that happen. But that would be time travel shenanigans. Then again, who knows? Crazier things can happen. Well, I mean, can't really say that we're not ready. Nothing else to do. Okay. But it's just, it is, I've got to say, Nuzleaf is probably the best, like, twist villain out of all the Mystery Dungeon games. Purely because he was there from the beginning. And his plan was to. 
Chapter 21, Dark Matter. And here I... Th so maybe we're going to... I don't know. Who knows how many chapters? Let me start off by telling you about Dark Matter. He's a real son of a bitch. The truth is this. Dark Matter is just one big bundle of hate, unhappiness, and pain. So, kind of like the bitter cold? Well, I guess if there's one, like, negative emotion monster, why not another one? It comes from all the Pokémon in the world. Or maybe this is just, like, the second form of bitter cold. Because, like, bitter cold could have been formed by distrust and fear. And then after bitter cold was annihilated, another form of, like, receptacle of hate. Basically, like, how... Uh, Hydragon and like the is a voice of life because he said that he communicated with other voices of life on how to handle like the human thing us losing everybody losing their memory of the human in GTI it stands to reason that I guess there would also be these voices of death like the bitter cold and if there's more than one voice of life Hydragon out there why not another anomalous inhuman monster it's just hating things? Yes. Every time you feel annoyed with someone, every time you feel jealous of someone, every negative feeling that any of us have, all to come together and grow, and they form what is now attacking the Tree of Life. Uh, hold on a sec. You said negative feelings, but doesn't, like, everyone feel that way sometimes? If that's what creates dark matter, then isn't it impossible to ever get rid of it? That's right. In the ancient past, it was stopped by the alignment of the stars, and so the worst danger was averted. But Dark Matter was never defeated. Dark Matter will never go away. What? But, but then, what can we do? We still don't have an answer to that, but we still have to do something, or our world is finished. That's why we've been trying to find some breakthrough by examining the past. Why don't I tell you about what I found? Long ago, as is happening now, this planet did begin to be pulled too close to the sun. The Pokémon living in the ancient time tried to fight against Dark Matter, but it wasn't just them alone. There was a single human who battled alongside them. A single human? Now, this is only my own theory, but if I had to say, I'd guess that... Oh, never mind. It already... I made the joke of, oh, we have to go to the past to defeat Dark Matter then, and then come back and do it again. Nope, uh, I, I guess that makes sense on how I was able to know that Nuzleaf and the Behem were my enemies, because I'd already dealt with it all before. That human was you. Then again, this is just a theory. A game theory! I think Celebi's uh, theory is wrong. I think the ancient human is Gabriel. Hear me out. He knows how to read the ancient Pokemon language. He had harmony scarves that are tied to the Tree of Life. And he mysteriously showed up on Caracosta's doorstep. That's just in my theory. Because it's just like, it feels... Mostly because while that would answer like some things of like how I knew Nuzleaf and Behem were my enemy. Probably because like I dealt with dark matter before but we never beat it we never beat dark matter but then there's still other things like there's still other things like somebody was writing ancient pokemon in the void lands and even said something about waiting in the void lands until the time was right so i wonder if there's another pokemon at play who's from the ancient time waited near the end of the void lands only to jump out when the stoning started to occur again and is running about a lot of dark matter is similar to the bitter cold but i think it's executed somewhat better it does have a lot more presence and while muna and muna's gang are really interesting i think kyurem could have been handled better and like the bitter cold just kind of comes out of nowhere and, like, never really had an official presence. It was just, like, Muna's suicide cult and Kurum going, I saw the future, so I'm gonna make that future happen. 
plus it, like but at the same time i don't really br blame gti for it because it was a very condensed plot the characters were really good there but yeah i do enjoy like that dark matter isn't like is like the bitter cold but different it's like the bitter cold but different and plus again i like it in the sense that it kind of makes the like a uh, hydrogen voice of life with the other voices of life for other continents existing kind of then be reinforced upon like this negative like flip side similar to the bitter cold there are these other negative forces out there but yet yeah, back to Celebi's theory that human was you neon it would have been hilarious if i like was on that screen this entire time it's like that human is you and then i made that theory and then she said gabriel i think that would be highly amusing Neon? Of course we can't confirm the theory due to Neon's memory loss, and whether or not it really was Neon. The fact remains that this human continued to fight on until the stars could do their work. This one human was able to stop Dark Matter in its tracks, if only for a time. But Dark Matter rises time and again with the movement of the planets. The time will come when it rises yet again. Perhaps knowing that, and wanting to help those who would fight it in the future, the Pokémon of that ancient age prepared certain countermeasures because... Nuzleaf did say that I was brought here by an ancient Pokémon, so maybe. Measures such as the Sealed Spring and the scarves you two wear now. But how did the ancient Pokémon get the scarves to Gabriel? What? Our scarves? Because they're Gabriel's scarves, they're not mine. I mean, sure, they do seem to have some kind of strange power. That is because those scarves were made by an ancient Pokemon, known as Mew. They were made using materials from the Tree of Life itself. Well, I guess that makes sense. Mew just dropping... Well, the... Hmm. I wonder if Mew... The, like, I guess it makes sense. Mew maybe set countermeasures to bring me to the future. And then Mew, being an immortal legendary, just kind of hung about... And uh, then maybe f came across an orphan Finnegan and was like, you know what? The future hero needs a friend. And so, or it could be, hmm. or it could be that maybe Mew was looking over Luminous Spring for a long time, looking over the barrier. And that's why maybe, or maybe Brain is going down diddly dee. Okay, my theory is, Mew took Gabriel as a young Finnegan orphan they found, wrapped them in the Harmony scarves, and placed them on the doorstep to Caracosta in Serene Village because Mew knew that the human would eventually go to Serene Village to open up the Luminous Spring to stop the Turning to Stone incidents. And then maybe Mew, something happened to Mew that we don't know yet. It's like, who knows? I do not know. And then maybe Mew just like, you know what? This young child will be the best friend to the future human when they come here to save the world. And as a gift of the, I'm not only just going to give you these harmony scars, I'm going to give you the ability to read ancient Pokemon. Doop. Maybe. Or again, maybe Gabriel is the ancient human. I don't know. Because I can't read ancient Pokemon. But then again, if I was a human, maybe I could never read hu hu uh, ancient Pokemon. I was illiterate. I all, I've, I've always been. They were made using materials from the Tree of Life itself. Though countless generations, those scarves were passed down from hand to hand. Okay, never mind. Hmm. So was it like a Mew cult? And they abandoned Gabriel? Until they ended up with you, Gabriel. But how are they passed down through the generations only to be given to an orphan who was placed on a doorstep. Huh. But why should I have something so important? That's exactly what I'd like to know. As soon as I brought up the question of the ancient scarves of Amphros here, he told me to look at those scarves that you and Neon wore around your necks. And they do look identical to the scarves that I saw in the ancient past. I couldn't believe it, to be honest. These are durable scarves. Neither can I. My old pops has always said that I had... Could it be that Caracosta was... Hmm. Huh. Could it be that Caracosta... 
Think, 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 thunk. So either Caracosta is a part of the ancient lineage and has been, pass been passed down these scars and he just lied about Gabriel, like, being waddle swaddled in them when he was placed on his doorstep. Or I don't know. It's like, this is just asking more questions. Yeah. My old pops has always said that I had these scarves on me when he found me. He said I was wrapped in them. But how did that come to be? I suppose thinking about it isn't going to help us any right now. <laughs> From my Twitch chat, what I presume to be a joke, Caracosta is Mew real. That would be kind of hilarious because Mew is always a trickster from what I've seen in the various medias. So having a Mew pretend to be a Caracosta who is very car carmudgeon and just like, No, I'm not going to allow it. You stop be going out and being dangerous would be hilarious. Everyone is ditto. Everyone is Crystal Jesus in Purgatory. You said that the ancient Pokemon was called Mew, the one who made the scarves from the Tree of Life. And that's right. Mew was something of a leader back when the Pokemon first battled Dark Matter. Neon, do you remember what Nuzleaf said when we were in the prehistoric ruins? And Neon here. Well, Neon was summoned here by the spirit of an ancient Pokemon and brought right along through the bounds of time and space, all in an effort to save this world. Time and space, so I guess I could be the ancient human. Nuzleaf said that what, uh, that what called Neon here from the human world was the spirit of an ancient Pokemon. Might that not be referring to Mew? Well, that would be sad. Mew is dead. So Mew is the one. Is it just a theory? It is just a theory, of course. A GAME THEORY! But we believe that you did fight Dark Matter once before in the past, Neon. So your experience and knowledge of that battle would be necessary in the future. And that is why Mew, or at least his spirit, called you back from the human world to help us once more. But then you lost your memory when fighting against the Behem. Neon, if you can remember anything, anything at all, no matter how small. I can't. I can't remember anything. Maybe we should have brought that Behem along with us so he could undo the mental block. Well, even if your memories are lost, there is one thing we can say for certain. The scarves worn by Gabriel and you were made to battle Dark Matter, so those scarves must serve somehow as keys to defeating Dark Matter. And Gabriel. If I'm not mistaken, this battle will be yours to fight, Gabriel. M mine Why me? Come, comrades, it's time we get moving. If we let things go on as they are, Dark Matter will leave and take the Tree of Life with it, abandoning our planet to be consumed by the blazing sun. So great, the Dark Matter is just the big Getty star from Return, like, Metacooler's Revenge. We must act at once. Wait! Do we even know where the Tree of Life is? On this island, ahead of us lies Primeval Forest, and within it, the Tree of Life. Fire Island, where we all went together once, is also quite near. It has taken us a great deal of work to find this place, but we are finally here. It's time, Neon, Gabriel. Well. Interesting. They may be gone for now, but eventually Nuzleaf and the others will come after us. We should hurry. At this rate, our planet will be absorbed by the sun. We have to do something before that happens. The scarves were made by Mew for the battle against dark matter, so that scarf you wear may be the key. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Beyond us lies a place known as Primeval Forest. The Tree of Life is deep within it. Let's go into Primeval Forest. But I'm still wondering, overall... Like, what is... Our dear boy, Gabriel's deal. Because he has to be, like, important somehow. Like, who knows? Maybe Mew created him? And he's like Mew's child?
Because Mew, well, then again, it was said, Celebi said the scarves were passed down through generations. Well, let's listen to the song and, well, first let's talk to the boy. Color me surprised, Neon. You, you fought against dark matter way back when, huh? There's so much we don't know the truth about, like these scarves here. But the only choice we have now is to move forward. Let's get to the Tree of Life. And this is a boppin' song. Oh, add members you want to take. Well, uh, first things first. I have to put something away. Uh, I guess an orange berry. Overall, I guess a... Hmm. Let's let me see. Who can I bring along? I can... Uh, let's also see your, like, levels. I could bring Jirachi, who's Steel and Psychic. Grass and Psychic. He has Swift, Psychic, Flash Cannon. Oh, he has a Fire Punch. That would actually be pretty good, I think. So we're going to bring Ampharos. Because this is going to be a forest. There's going to be Grass types galore in here. If I... If, like, I, I do want to bring, like... The girl, the utter amazing wonderfulness that is Esper with us, but uh, <laughs> I'm I'm still in pain mode. Oh, I I backed out instead. I'm a fool. Cause come along, Ampharos. Let's go! Road to Primeval Forest. Oh, hey, an apple! There's a motherfucking berry power in here! Well, I guess I'll put an orange berry down and eat it. Ah, that thing broke. Darn. I'll raise my HP. I'm gonna try and find that berry power. Hmm. I don't I don't think I'm scared of you too much. So I'm gonna let you approach me. Oh hey, you brought the berry power to me! Hell yeah! I am going to become a god! Another apple! We need all the apples we can get. I think that's what the game is telling me. And we're gonna give the uh, the berry to him, increase his health. Grab the money, just because we can. The fuck are you doing? Well, I guess you are hiding near the Tree of Life because the world is coming to an end. But I have my inventory, fool. I'll keep mind of your existence. I haven't seen one of you yet. What are you doing here? Nom. Okay, so far the enemies that I've run into, not as scary as the goddamn artillery fire waterhole of hell. Schmeck. Nom. And a level up. Huzzah. Super critical. I guess I'll take it. Well, I guess I'll eat this apple while I'm here. Yeah, get confused, you fool. And a level up for the boy. You know, I just realized something. Technically, this game can be 100% completed. And probably have it so there's no, like, expeditions you can go on ever again. Because of how thoroughly you complete the game. I wonder if something's gonna happen if you, like, complete all the expeditions in the connection orb. 
and what that might look like. Oh no. Like, I doubt that it would do that, but at the same time... This is basically the gotta collect them all. Man, that flute's very good. Well, that's just mean. How are you that speedy? You are confused and dying under the sun. Also, why would you use Sunny Day? The world is dying. The world is already too hot for its britches. Trap proof. Honestly, yes, please. I am sick and tired of getting turned into poison man. I'll go ahead and nom on uh, Orenberry. So that I get more health. Man, all these Nidos are very fast. Why well, you're quite terrifying. I punch you. Let's see, who needs this the most? Honestly, you. I'm trying to think the, like, clink-clonging kind of scale this instrument is reminding me of something, but I don't know what. That one is reminding me of something, and I cannot recall what. Warp payback? Nah, I don't think so. Increases defense. I'm the one that's probably going to be hit a lot. Go ahead and eat the apple on the ground. I do not care to manage my apple inventory for the Apple Mafia. The world is going to hell. I'm going to be better than Kecleon. The marimba? That's probably what it is. That's going to explode down there, isn't it? Oh, I should have used a different thing. I'm a fool. I wouldn't have gotten to it anyway. Ah, we did get a thing. Ah, uh, we got a clutch performer, which increases my speed. Well, eh, increased speed is also very good. Keep healing yourself. You'll die eventually. And I need to use pushing my allies around to my benefit more. I'm going to kill you. Not very effective, still does more damage than I do. Ah, shit. Like, I understand you have a horn, but why is it called Peck? I wonder if you might have, like, a different name in the, like, Japanese translation. And if, like, in Japanese, Peck is something else. I guess we'll leave the Blast Seed. Like how Splash is instead Hop. Which is probably why Hopip learns it, I think. Super critical, I guess. Give it to the boy. In Japanese, Peck is Peck. Then it just makes no sense. Increase of speed, I always need speed. I gotta go fast. Which reminds me, apparently, 
in an episode of the anime recently, I think. I don't know. I just saw it on YouTube Shorts. Garchomp can outspeed a fighter jet, which also, fighter jets are canon to Pokemon now. Like, we could always assume that maybe they existed, but it's just weird to see, like, it actually being a thing. And Lullaby, because Lullaby is just amazing. I can hit an enemy and they'll fall asleep. And then I get to kick their ass. Alright, since there's multiple enemies, we're gonna Petrify Wand you. You are a fool. Now you will die. Another example of a Japanese name is Sunny Day is actually just Clear Skies. Huh. Interesting. Power Boost X, hell yeah. I suppose we'll move along so we don't run into anything beyond our power. I also think, like, uh, some of what they, they're called the Z-moves. A bunch of Z-moves are, like, apparently, like, very different between English and Japanese. But it's interesting that this place almost like feels like it would be like a more hospitable place. It's less scary than the prehistoric ruins at the very least. <laughs> well, Team Rocket commonly uses fucking Gundam. Yeah, but Gundam is different from like fighter jets. Especially because like it's been ages since like, they let anything weapon-wise beyond, like, fantasy weapons appear in the Pokemon anime. It's been ages since they acknowledged guns. Tons of apples. Oh, I thought that was a path I could go down on. My brain is dead. Another apple. Sure. Fighter jets in a Pokemon anime? Then does that also mean there's human military like in our world? I mean, like, in the anime movie... I think there's, like, a... F in one of the anime movies, the one about, like, Lucario and the mystery of Mew or something, like, they show, like, a flashback-ish a little bit of, like, the war that was going on around then. The ancient medieval war where Pokemon were partaking in it. It just... Interesting. Well, that's mean. That's the one downside to having a big fucking train. Is that that can happen, and that's annoying. Well, that's extra mean. Well, at least you confused your own ally. Well, that's just mean. Thank God that I got 
like a bubble ball. Berry power, that would have been extra painful. Come back to life, tiny child. Now we're going to get out of here. Ah, midway point. The sun sure has gotten a lot closer. We've almost reached the entrance to the primeval forest. There we will find the tree of life. We have to do something about the dark matter before it's too late. We must hasten onward. This looks like a nice place to rest, but we don't have time now. Let's keep moving. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hmm. I'll keep warp one just in case. Doo -doo -doo. Honestly. And I'll pull out. Going full blazing. Are we still not to primeval forest? <laughs> Remember, Lieutenant Surge supposedly served in the war, and his Pokemon helped him. <laughs> also, as funny as guns and such are, this is the world of living flamethrowers. Guns ain't shit. Now nah, you never know. There's always bazookas. Team Rocket liked those two. You fool, I have berry power. Uh, one second. I'm gonna make sure, uh, since there's somebody up there that wants to fight us, you stay right there. We're gonna kick somebody else's ass. Yeah, come on, come fight us. You're annoying, you were just standing there, knowing. Just wasting all our time. Oh, great, I think that broke it out. Well, at least I think I made the right choice in... <laughs> petrifying you at the very least. And a wand expert! Hell yeah! Right when I start using wands much more. Power boost Y, always for the boy. Energy seed. I guess we'll give it to you. Raise your HP. Would be very mean of the game to go, actually, we're gonna reset all your emeras and stuff before the boss fight. Because there's obviously gotta be a boss fight here. We're going to go fight the corrupted tree of life, probably. Also, Gabriel is just kicking ass with his <laughs> ember power, doing tons of damage. Let's move along. We cleared a bunch of rooms. I continue to be annoyed by my allies, who just insistently get in front of me. Ah, of course you break right then. I'll make my own Emra with blackjack and hookers. Ah, uh, status mirror, not the greatest. Increases speed, definitely want. And then it leads us down here.
go to sleep. I trust them to take it down. Hmm, toughness. Hmm, I don't think there's anything too important one way or another. Take them all out. That was just a train of assholes down there. Yeah, barrage guard increases special defense. We'll give it to Gabriel. Since I got the last one that increases special defense. Again, I really need to remember to make my own playlist of mystery dungeon music. Because this is such good music. Wonderful songs. Eh, don't use. Don't use. I just want to move out of the way. How oh, dare the game make me miss five million times in a row. I pay taxes. And we'll just move along. Not so invulnerable now, are you? You're like, hee hee hee, I'm a ghost. I can just stand here and they have to come to me. Then I let my army of minions shoot at him. <laughs> you dare attack Celebi, you motherfucker. Eh, I'm just gonna move on. Boost Y. Give it to the boy. Yeah, honestly, probably the best idea. Oh, you had no health. What the hell? Very rude game. Just having an asshole that just stands there. Hehehe, <laughs> you can't hit me. And then you spawn him next to a goddamn... Imura. And it was a good Imura, too. This is... Quiver dance all you want. You're still gonna die like next turn. Paralysis guard. Just increases HP. Increase the boy's HP. Lol. Oh. Increase my... Healing a little bit. And we'll move along. finally made it. This is Primeval Forest, or a part of it anyway. It's, uh, pretty dark, isn't it? I can't see two feet in front of me. The canopy is indeed quite dense, but I don't believe the actual forest is all that large, so we should not be far from the Tree of Life. Oh, I see light ahead. It looks like we can get out of that way. Do we actually see the Tree of Life? 
Whoa! Is that it? It's got to be the Tree of Life. What else could it be? Well, it looks very dead and corrupted. And I guess... Dark Matter decided to roost up at the top, and God, that's a giant tree! How did we, like, how did we not see it from, like, the road here? What a colossal tree! Look at how many branches it has! But no leaves anywhere except near the bottom. It looks nearly dead. Look at the top! What is that thing? Concerning the size of the tree, that's giant. There's some black thing smoldering up there! Is that it? Yes. I'd say that's our dark matter. And I think we're out of time. Let's get up there at once! Um, how? We'll just have to climb the tree, naturally. We can fly, so we'll go up ahead to scout things out. HALT! Oh, of course you gotta be- get here fast. Nuzleaf! And be him! And Yevatel! We're getting too close. And Yevatel! Well... Well, I guess the Dark Matter has pulled a... You have outlived your usefulness. They are acting oddly. They seem to be in pain. That's it! Be him? You're the be him from before. Nuzleaf and the other be him. They've been acting strange all this while. Like they're not even there. Like they've lost all sense of self. What does that mean? Dark Matter's control must be growing stronger. Which means... That we have no more time to waste. Gah! Shadows. Like the ones in the Voidlands. You guys, that's enough already! Just, just stop! Gah! I'm scared, okay? I'm scared to be sent to the Voidlands. But even more than that, I can't stand this. I can't stand doing this kind of thing. Not a minute longer. Be him. Just stop what... Nope, you're getting turned to stone, boyo. Be him! They turn him to stone. The ability to turn Pokemon into stone. That's going to be our greatest hurdle. If we get hit with a blast like that, we're finished. Yeah. What? You're aiming at me? Asper, get out of the way! How did you do that? Huh? Yeah! How are we doing that? Is it our scarves? Did the poor, poor boy be him? Our harmony scarves? Did the poor be him just not be close enough to us? Poor guy, at least he wasn't sentenced to the darkest depths of the Voidlands. But hey, I was waiting when we were gonna get this power again. Neon, check it out! It's just like what happened when we fought Entei that time. It's like the Tree of Life resonated with our scarves and... and that's it! Your scarves are made from the Tree of Life, after all. And Fire Island isn't far from here. Your scarves must have been resonating with the Tree of Life that time as well. And I'd bet that it was the Tree of Life's power that repelled those n shadows Nuzli threw at us. The Tree of Life and those scarves saved us from being turned to stone. Meanwhile, poor Behem. Then that means... Bingo! The Tree of Life isn't dead yet! It's still alive and kicking! There's still hope, and aside, as an aside, Amphros, trees don't kick. As long as we can keep ourselves from being turned to stone, we can still fight this. We'll get past these tools of darkness, and take on dark matter itself! To arms, comrades!
That's gonna do a lot of damage. I doubt it's gonna work, but it might keep his minions under control. Nope, they broke out immediately. I wish I could, like... This is time where I would like to be able to move my allies around on my own. I probably should have kept that, uh... Ba ba ba. Like, instant revive. All revive. Okay, that still hit them, darn you. Oblivion Wing has a big, uh, like, hit radius. Then again, that is a big enemy. Oh, that's just such mean. I understand they wanted to up it from Kirim, but Kirim was better than this because he wasn't that big of a jackass. I'll screech at you. Oh wait, we can do uh, a Unite attack. Luckily I brought a shit ton of Reviver Seeds. Just very mean of the game. And of course you fucking do that, you bastard. We'll give you Ember for Stab and Electro Ball. Even if the boy will probably miss. And no use since wasting Reviver Seeds. But considering he had three allies, I feel like... They could have made <laughs> a little bit of telegraphing to the multi-row hit monster attack. Oh, you're back? <sighs> what in the world? Where might I be now? So now we're going to see how the actual Nuzleaf is like, considering that, like, we have no idea what he's like not like. Possessed. How did we get here? Yeah! Well, I guess we don't get to know him after all. Nuzleaf and the others disappeared? Where did they go? I don't know. For a moment there, it seemed as though they had recovered themselves, but... That it isn't what matters now, team. We have to keep moving. You're right. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, Esper? Did you just laugh? It wasn't me. It sounded nothing like me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... That doesn't sound like any of us. It's like the voice is coming from right inside my own head. <laughs> All of creation. At last. At last, the time has come. Now I shall leave this world. It sounds like several different voices. And yet, it's like they all speak as one. No, it can't be. Is this the voice of... These negative feelings. Is this dark matter? Th now what? It's trying to pull the tree out of the earth. Which is bad, because that's a big-ass tree. Think of the roots. Ah, the tree of life! Jesus! I was partly joking, but no, it's actually 
tons of damage. This is literally like... Huh. How are we gonna stop that? Oh, yeah, because it's getting far away now, and the tree's dying more. We changed back! Because the tree of life left the planet? Celebi, can you warp there? I've been trying since the second it pulled away from the ground, but the distortions created by dark matter are too strong. I won't let it in this way! Gabriel! No! I can't make it! This can't be the end! Not when we fought so hard to get here! Gabriel, how the hell are you doing this? Gabriel has entered the zone. But it's too far! Gabriel, I'll give you a boost. Jirachi! I'm next. Okay, this is badass. Just a little farther! No, it's still too far. I'm not going to make it. Is this it? Gabriel! Neon! This is amazing. Don't you dare give up! I'll get you up there, so you just keep going! Thank you, Neon! You're always the one who... And then I fall to my death. I'll reach it! I have to reach it! Just a little more! Almost there! Lol. Well, that's depressing. No! He landed on Ampharos. Oh, ah! Uh. Ampharos? Did you break my fall? That I did. Even for someone as marvelous as me, though, absorbing such a blow was a bit tough. How did I get back down? Jirachi, we can still fly, and that's what we'll do. How is a tree outspeeding all of you? No, oh, it's getting farther and farther ahead. We can't even catch up to it. Uh, now what do we do? Hey, Rayquaza, it would be a cool time if you'd come and come back. Uh, maybe you, uh, Deoxys? You specifically- Where's the Deoxys? She hasn't appeared at all! Yeah. All of creation! Hearken to my world! The tree of life shall wither and fall. Denied of all power, the tree now flies through space. To be drawn into the sun! The world no longer spins. The course of this planet is now swift. It shall be consumed by the sun as well. I am no me. I'm we are. All together, dark mortal, and we shall return this world to the void. We were born of you all. All that creation brought us forth. The hatred and jealousy you all bear. The darkness found in all creation. The quarrel and the wars, the grudges and prejudices. All of it comes to trouble to give birth to that ugliness. But I am. 
I'm sorry. I couldn't catch it. This is what your negativity has been. This doom is of your own making. All because the ugliness within the hearts of Pokemon grew too great. You invited this upon yourselves. Where to blame? Cling to your precious product, and together with it, be returned to nothingness. This is your end. How are we surviving this close to the sun, yet it be so dark? Is there nothing we can do? Are we simply to watch the end approach with no hope left? What? What was that? That roar? Hey, Rayquaza, did you come back to smack the the the, 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 the fucking thing back down? The Tree of Life! You're right. The space surrounding the Tree of Life is being distorted. And look! Something stopped it. It's not flying higher. Deoxys, is it you? Oh, it's both of them! Do not underestimate the power of Pokemon! <laughs> this is not gonna work. It's too badass. Well, maybe it'll force it back down to the planet. Maybe. Neon, Gabriel, can you hear me? A voice? Where's it coming from? Listen to my words carefully. M oh, oh, well we did see him. My name is Arceus. Arceus? Bringing together the power of all the Pokemon in this world, we will slow the ascent of the Tree of Life. We will prevent it from reaching the sun. Hey, a Mewtwo! We are using the psychic powers of a certain Pokemon to pool. Oh, all the other ones that managed to get away. And those who can fly are attacking directly from the sky. This is like Pokemon 2000 almost. Yet if we get too close, we will all be turned to stone. Ampharos, the same is true for you all. Us? That is right. Dark Matter's power is too strong from atop the Tree of Life. Your scars may have protected you all during the recent battle against Yveltar, but that will not be the case where you are to go next. Only those in direct contact with the scars will be protected from Dark Matter's ever-growing power. I see. Then that leaves... Neon and Gabriel. As soon as you two are ready, I will transport you to the Tree of Life. You are our final hope. We must depend on you while we hold the Tree of Life back. Defeat Dark Matter. We will. Thank you, Arceus. We'll find a way, for sure. Then I will prepare to teleport you. I will contact you when things are ready. I wish you luck in the battle ahead. We still have a shot, Ampharos. So our messages did reach them in time. What? Ampharos and Jirachi here traveled far and wide to try and reach the allies we would need this day. While you two were in the Voidlands, Gabriel, they were preparing for battle. And now the Pokemon have heeded the call. I had no idea. But that seems to be the end of our part in this battle. The rest is in your hands. Do your best. We'll give it everything we've got! Neon! This is our final battle. I don't know yet what we can possi how we can possibly beat Dark Matter, but this is the chance that everyone worked so hard to give us. That's right. We can't let it go to waste. We owe them that much, at least. 
We'll find a way to win. We'll do something about dark matter. You'll see. Let's do this, Neon. Celebi, let's take to the sky again. This is just a very epic moment. A very epic one. I love that in the first game, Rayquaza was the last to hear about the issue, and here he's the first to find something is up. That is actually very funny. We can still help. Let's go out our power to stopping the Tree of Life's ascent. You're right. We should be up there. Uh, um, Celebi? You told me once before that you thought this battle would be mine to fight. I did. I just, well, I don't know what it is, but I think you were right. Well, either there's... Unless we actually climb the tree, this will be the final fight. Oh, hey, Yevatel was the final boss thing. Battle in the stratosphere! More like war. Are we actually going to see Pokemon get turned to stone and fall? That would be dark. We're going to have to fight our way up. Gah! I, I can't breathe. <laughs> Last time, it was because of the evils in Pokemon's hearts. This time, it's because of the atmosphere. Neon, Gabriel, do you hear me? Arceus, we hear you, but it's hard to breathe all of a sudden. The Tree of Life has nearly reached the stratosphere now. It will be incredibly cold, but even worse, the air is very thin at that height. Ah, but now that we're on the tree, our scarves activate again! Booyah! Oh, my chest. I can breathe again. The pain's gone. The Tree of Life is giving you two the strength now. You are now at the roots of the tree. Countless tendrils come together here. Look around you. The tree is withering and growing black with dark matters wrought and yet. If you look closely, do you not see small lines of light? That is the Tree of Life's spirit. The light flows toward the trunk of the tree, filling it with the power of life. Got it. So it's that power that made us evolve. And that's all the proof we need to know that the Tree of Life is still alive! That's right. But we have not been able to completely stop the Tree of Life's ascent. Everyone is doing their best, but the tree continues to slowly and inexorably move farther from the planet. So we have no time. If you travel up from where you stand now, you should be able to reach Dark Matter. Yet I expect Dark Matter will try to halt you on your way with its dark illusions. Take care. We will. Thank you, Arceus. One last thing. Everything is up to you too from here on out. Please, protect our tomorrows, the future of all Pokemon. You can count on us. We'll go squash that dark matter in no time. Gabriel has always been so positive with such unflagging spirit. But now, that spirit burns ever brighter than ever. Is it just an act to keep our hopes up? I don't know what it is. But it makes me feel better about our chances up here. Come on, Neon! To wherever Dark Matter is! You know, I just kind of realized something. In a way, technically this is yet another JRPG that ends with you on a spaceship. Ooh! This is some music. The trumpets! Hey, you know what? Let's just bring all the reviver seeds that we can. Well, actually, let me check my bag. Ooh! Okay, we have a decent amount of max elixirs and stuff, so... Let's go on!
Discord erupted among your teammates. You can't use Alliance or uh, switch the leader. Rude. This music is good. So let me go check my tactics. No, nope, let's go together. Hmm. Raise a special defense. I got steel, so that might be worrisome. But yeah, this is some nice music. I need to remember to use... Ooh! This music! This is very good! Very nice music. I'm loving it. Hmm. We should probably head to the exit now. Yeah, that's just a decoy seed. And that little reverberating sound that happened there. That reminds me of, uh, In the Hands of Fate. I think. No, it actually reminds me of Through the Sea of Time. Because that's like a... a noise that happens. God, the music is so good! I think that's the dark matter taunting me, because that was a dead child. Gonna use my petrify wand, stop you from causing too much trouble. Well, that's mean. The bells on this. Al, rude. And yeah, I also like that this is like the only time that we've ever explored fully evolved. Which is kind of a nice touch. Okay, mean game. Hate when the AI decides, like, I'm gonna go the wrong direction. I know it was trying to, like, get into a position to use a ranged attack, but failed that. There was a wall in the way. God, the music is so good. Yeah, that reverberating sound just always hits me. This is really, really good. Just really, really good.
I wonder if there's going to be more than just the roots. Or if... Like, there's going to be multiple sections to this. How is there money in this place? Hell yeah, level up your ember. Da, da, da. I should have put away that extra bracelet. I'm a bad. Well, that's mean. If there's one thing with Mystery Dungeon, the soundtracks are always just amazing. The soundtracks are just great. And I love them. And also, this is much easier than the prehistoric ruins. Probably because we're uh, got getting stat boosts from being fully evolved, but still. <coughs> Excuse me. If this song could have worked like, uh, like uh, a more obvious allusion to the uh, partner theme in there, God, this would be hitting me super hard. Well, the Tree of Life does make the world rotate, so of course there's money after all. <laughs> it makes the world go round. Well, I can't, can't argue that. Also hilarious that when we run into the first enemy to pluck from our bag, we immediately get a replacement. How dare you. That's just an apple. Da, 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 da. Oh wait, there was a sparkly. We got an orange berry. This must be very weird for Gabriel, because now he's just walking along on two legs. Like, if this were like a story story, there would be funny aha moments of him, like, tripping as he has to, like, get used to having legs. Well, like, less legs than usual, I suppose. Which would be a little bit of humor amidst the darkness. Of like, oh god, we're all going to die. Now it makes me wonder, if we get out of here, are we going to have expeditions set to come here? Ba, ba, ba. Music is so good. And again, this is so much easier than prehistoric ruins. Or like, not even that, the submerged continent thing. That kicked my ass. You fool. Now die. Shit. You, instead of being pummeled to death, Blossom chose to be burnt to death. It's a witch! Kill it! Kill it! Up. Does 
Zine stare, I'll take that. <laughs> Just Blossom instantly annihilated. We'll take Trap Proof. Safeguard all you want. You're still gonna die. But this is nice. This is kind of like a... Almost a power trip moment. Because you're able to be, like, much more powerful. And, like, this is, like, the only time in any Mystery Dungeon game ever that you are fully evolved during the main story. Or evolved at all, really. It would be neat if we managed to, like, get through this. If in the post-game we can, like... I don't know, somehow attain these forms in Dungeon. Maybe through that super duper rare Emera, if at mo at least. You can never return to this dungeon after clearing it in normal play, so don't worry. You, you won't need to do dun uh, missions here. Become confused, idiot. Ah, and another Max Elixir. I punch you from afar, and then I bite you. Then you become confused, then you are burned to death. Imagine if we can make the bitter, or like, not the bitter cold, the, the dark matter confused. I slap him. He's like, what the fuck? Then against the dark matter, it'd probably be like, haha. Evil emotions just make me more powerful. You fight him. Hmm, an orange berry. I don't think it increases my health anymore. I might as well try it. Another guard boost. I'm gonna I'm gonna become a tank. Let's move along. I think you're getting too close. If you all get turned to stone, you are just gonna shatter. Well, that's not good. That was an explosion of dark matter. Oh, we can hear it now. It stopped. What was that sound? It sounded almost like a Pokemon's cry. I wonder, like, did Dark Matter take on a host? What Pokemon would that be, I wonder? What poor schmuck. I've got a bad feeling about this. Hurry, Neon. Well, we're definitely deeper in now. Hmm? Is this... Neon, there! Are we gonna have to fight you guys again? It's Nuzleaf and Behem, even Yevatel. I just had a thought. What if Dark Matter's uh, host is uh, Xerneas? We haven't seen Xerneas, and Xerneas is the other coin to Yevatel, so would make sense, I guess. We'll have to see. What is going on? They've been been caught by who? I don't know. This could be a trap. Yeah, but even if it is a trap, 
Neon, I know. And the only one who's not here is the good Behem. You run, sir. Ugh! It hurts. Are you all right? Gazarkius did warn us, didn't he? That it would be hard to breathe up here because the air's so thin. Um, now, y'all. I reckon I've been unfair to the two of you all this time. Lying to you and even looking down on you, if I'm to be perfectly honest. I did all that. I did all that and still... Still, y'all. And <laughs> then they run. Hey, wait! Well, there he went. I'm still glad that it wasn't a trap. Neon, Yevatel is next. <laughs> Falls to the ground. Hmm. Why? Huh? Why what? You could have passed us by and never lifted a finger in our aid. Even if we were being controlled by another. We still bear responsibility for our actions. We have done things which can never be undone, nor forgiven. And yet you would move to save us. You would allow us to live. Yeah, but I do want something for it. We saved Nuzleaf and them back there. But they ran off somewhere. They didn't look that like they were in good shape. And if they were doing fine, we're still up in the sky. They can't get down from here. So would you take Nuzleaf and the Behem back down to the planet with you? Please, Yvatel. I wonder if he just bounced. Oh, do you think he'll do it? He's hard to read, but I guess you and me have just got to keep moving ahead. Come on, Neon. <laughs> he just <laughs> zoops away. I want to go back to the death dimension. Ooh. Interesting. If we get through here, we'll be able to reach dark matter. Well, that's the feeling I get anyway. We're close, Neon. So fight with me. This one last time, we're going to save this planet. We're gonna save the Pokemon world. Interesting music. Come on, Neon. We can do this. Together! We can defeat Dark Matter. Tree of Life Trunk. Pick this up. Lullaby. Perfect. God being this powerful is great. Interesting music. Berry power! Hell yeah. And a Whimsicott has... Okay, God. Delphox Gabriel is a badass. Or that Kingler, it just sucks. The song is very nice. That moment there, I was pondering if a motif was happening. It also still has that reverberating note that reminds me of Through the Sea of Time. Come along, Gabriel. Let's sing this dark matter to sleep. Da, da, 
This song is very good. Again, it's so different to things like Sky Tower, Temporal Tower, and Glacial Palace, but so beautiful in its own way. It's very good. Also, like that reverberating note that happened is making me think of, I forget what it's called, Something Something Drifts from Metroid Prime. Hmm, I think we have enough Reviver Seeds. Actually, we can spare a, an Orin Berry. We don't get health boosts from them. So, Reviver Seeds are top tier right now. Because there's something almost nostalgic about this song. At some points. It has, like, moments of intensity, and then moments of, like, I don't know, like, childhood remembrance. You know it'd be, like, heartbreaking if the Dark Matter sent, like, dark, like, uh, visions of our friends after us. Litwicks. Panchums. Also, yes, it is, in fact, using the partner's theme just a little more clear this time as the tree's calling out to the partner. Yeah. Like I, like, uh, Celebi said, this is gonna be... Gabriel's fight, too. And again, we have... We haven't really gotten... a confirmation, really, of anything about Gabriel. Like, we technically know that he's... Well, not even that. I, at closest guess, he was left on Karakosta's doorstep by Mew. With the... With the Harmony Scarves. Barrage for the boy, too. Da, 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 da. Darn it. We'll just move along. Ah. Oh, midway through. Hmm. Well, I don't think we'll need that many apples. So yeah, we'll put... three apples away. And bring out... three more Reviver Seeds. Remember back in GTI where I had, like, no Reviver Seeds? <laughs> Let's go, Neon. Gotta keep moving. You bitch. All in an attempt to keep, stop me from getting that there... ...shiny, you fuck. Ooh, a power boost Y. 
That's going to power up the boy. Increases special defense. Yeah, barrage coming in quick. Alliance expert. Let me see. Uh, increases accuracy of moves in alliance using the Asimura as a slightly boost your attack during it. I pr probably do that. I shall replace a the guard boost. That way, when it comes to dark matter, we can alliance him to death. Also, like, some of the notes here remind me of specifically some My Little Pony fan songs from ages ago. I think that's part of why it almost sounds nostalgic to me. The instrumentation is very similar in some places. I should have brought all of my, all my stuff. All those Imra ups. Music is so good. This is definitely going in a playlist. Oh, you bastard. Took away my uh, alliance, diddly D. Like, if basic attacks were faster, I would probably spam them more. Well, hey, at least you give me an excuse to go triple <laughs> power boost X. You wanted me to one-shot the Dark Matter, is that what you're saying, game? You guys are so good. What's the Dark Matter boss fight sound gonna be like? For some reason, these Tree of Life songs are reminding me of a million different things the more I think on them. so good. I have nothing else to say right now. Except this place definitely does... You know, I thought it was gonna be more like white. Like white timber and stuff. But it's like just different. You know what? Effect boost. Let's replace that guard boost. I 
I also hear the crumbling of the Tree of Life through the music. A power boost, why, you say? Let's rain hell and save the world. Some of the instruments even almost sound like the groaning of a tree that's, like, about to fall sometimes, too. They're just throwing a lot into this song. I don't really care much about clairvoyance currently. Lots of Emera dust today. I presume there's going to be more after that one shatters over here. Because we were not going to make it. It's giving us lots of max elixirs. Let's go on. There it is. That's dark matter. We finally reached it. We finally made it here. Whoa! All right, we're in the cosmos. Did we just instantly die? Oh. What is this place? We're trapped? It pulled us into a world of its own making. Which means an attack is coming next. You two again. The, the voices. They're coming from dark matter. Stop. Please. Just stop. Don't throw your lives away. The tree of life is dying. This planet will be consumed by the sun. The world is ending. We won't let it. We aren't going anywhere. You heard that, right? It said that the tree of life is dying. Which means... Neon, look there on the other side of dark matter. That's probably the tree of life, wouldn't you say? <gasps> but there in the tree's trunk, that light. The tree of life isn't as dead as dark matter might want us to believe. We can still make it. Neon, aim for that mass in the center of dark matter. I'm honestly not sure how to defeat this thing, but our scarves were made to beat dark matter. This is why we're here. So if we just ram it with all we've got, maybe something will happen. <laughs> Hold on, everyone. We will definitely... 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 Defeat Dark Matter! I swear it! Neon, let's go. The visual of the tree you might recognize too from the box art, I believe. Ooh. Dark Matter's animosity is lashing out. I wonder, can I affect you with Screech? I can. This is some cool music. Force Palm. Come on! Takes aim and strikes! Force Palm! Gah! And Lullaby. I'm gonna screech you again. 
This is some cool music that's playing. And we beat him. Presumably phase one. Bitter Cold had a one phase. Oh! Kind of like Bitter Cold again. We broke open its <laughs> cage. We we actually did it! <laughs> we managed to damage it. Just a little bit more now. A bit more and it'll break into pieces. Neon! <laughs> Stop! Leave me alone! No! I don't wanna disappear! Stop it! Just one more. This'll do it. B what? It suddenly got darker. Maybe killing dark matter is killing the tree? Wait. What does that mean? The light from the tree of life! It's gone out! <laughs> I can feel it! I can feel it now! The tree of life is running out of energy! The tree of life will die at last! Looks like you will fail! The tree of life has withered completely! This is the will of the universe! You've got no choice but to accept it! No! Dark Matter is... It's regenerating itself! Oh, it became that thing from uh, Astartes. <laughs> Ah, oh, crap, we're gonna devolve. Uh, evolutions! The power is all being stripped away! <laughs> and it does that again. What is this? Well, <laughs> you're gonna float out into space, I guess. Well, sucks to be you. And all these guys are gonna die because they're gonna smash into the planet. Unless the- Then again, Latios and Latias managed to survive, so... Oh, you're gonna get hit too? Yeah! <laughs> are we gonna see Arceus get turned to stone? That's hilarious! <laughs> Can't breathe! We turn back! All our power! You who would defy me! All of the Pokémon who ally themselves with you and your cause! Oh no, stone. What? Now there is no one left who can stop the Tree of Life's ascension. Give up. This universe created me. The darkness in your hearts. The universe wants this planet to collide with the sun. Look at you! Compared to the universe, you are too small to do anything. You are too weak! What can such small, weak creatures do? Nothing! So, give up. All you can do is feebly struggle on! I'm getting lightheaded. Oh, Yepitel, hi! <laughs> Yay! 
Gavitel! How'd you guys get here? Nuzli, be him! I sure am sorry, Neon. And apologies to you too, Gabriel. I hope this will make up for some of my wrongs. I know you all ain't likely to forgive me for what I've done to you in the past, but still... You! Are you not the pawns I controlled? Such weak-hearted traitors! Indeed. The weakness within our hearts brought this moment upon us. And that is why we now fight! No! Yvitel! Neon, Gabriel, I just want you all no! Nuzleaf, be him! Gabriel! Neon, don't worry about me. You've got to strike at dark matter. Why do you struggle so? You are too late. Everything will end. You have lost your evolved forms. Your strength. Even your allies. All that remains to you now are those scarves that do no more than save you from being turned to stone. What else is there for you here? Tell me, what else do you still have? Uh, what do we still have? Do we have anything? Each other? Isn't there anything? There's nothing. We've lost everything. There's nothing left. Why is there even... What is there to even fight for anymore? We've lost... Neon! Gabriel. Don't... Neon! Don't give up! I'm not giving up! Gabriel! That's right. I still have something. There's something right here. Something worth fighting for. What are you? It is useless. What can such a weak blow do to me? Do you see how weak you have become? You are weak, useless, powerless! You can do nothing! This is a cool moment. How can you not see it? Neon, no matter what. Don't give up. What? Don't you give up. Don't give up. Why? How? Oh! I turned you all into stone. So, how? Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. This music is good. Don't give up. 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 I can hear them. I can hear everyone. That's right, we... We still have one thing going for us. The will to keep fighting. 
The courage to keep going no matter what. The courage our allies have given us. It doesn't matter that they're turned to stone. They're still with us in spirit. And all the Pokemon yet living in this world. The many Pokemon who still haven't been turned into stone. They're still out there, whether near or far. I know that's what they're wishing for now. And that's why... There's no way we two are giving up! Gabriel. It doesn't matter how weak we are. It doesn't matter how powerless we seem. As long as we can still fight. You can't! Speak up! We will never give up! We're not finished yet. Let's go! All this music! Da -da. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Oh! Da -da 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 -da. Okay, that's a cool, uh, cool thing. Now the real fight begins! Ow. Luckily, Reviver Seeds. Do I have a Blast Seed? I think I put him away. Nope, I have one. This is awesome music. Da -da -da -da. Da, da, da. The music is amazing. Oh, that's bad. I overshot. And yet somehow I'm I only got hit once. That's amazing I only got hit once. Da, 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 da. Yeah, get confused. I love this music! And the cool thing is, we actually get to hear it compared to the bitter cold! Recharging your power? I do like that they give you the amount of steps needed to get to a safe place, so... It is your movement that matters there. Oh, it has a little effect you changed. And that, like, guitar riff there makes me think of, uh... Kirby again. Luckily, I brought a ton of Reviva Seeds. Okay, I need to be careful. One step to the... <laughs> and Gabriel was already there and took you out. This music is so good. Da, 
Yes, it, I really like because there's actual strategy here. Do I have to move or am I in a safe spot again? Let's stand together. I like the flute in there along the guitars. Oh, cutscene time. We did it! We actually did it! Well, its core is still there. It's trying to reconstitute itself. I think even the core is broken that time. Is that? Better than Dialga's fight to the finish, in my opinion? Maybe. I feel like Dialga's fight to the finish served a different purpose. This, but this, like, I feel like fight to the finish fits Explorers, but this, like, is a better finale song. Definitely. Or, like, final fight song. It helps also that Bitter Cold wasn't really sentient whilst Dark Matter is. It shows a shocking amount of character for a bundle of hatred. Indeed. Bitter Cold, nothing. It's just like, I am going to do my job. And, like, the death cult that grew around it was its personality. Meanwhile, this thing is just the poor nugget of nihilism forced to exist and absorb all our hatred. Is that Dark Matter's true core? Neon! I know. We just have to strike it there! Are you sure about this? What? Look at all of creation. You beings. Those like you. You'll only do it again. Do it again? Do what? I am the darkness within the hearts of all creation, within all Pokemon. All your hatred and all your pain, that is what I am made. If you break me here, the fragments of all that hatred and pain will be sent flying everywhere. It will run rampant in the world again. Negativity will take root around the world. It will flourish and grow. It will grow even larger and stronger than it is now. Until I am revived once more in some future generation. I am Dark Matter. I have always been. I will always be. I can never be extinguished. So we can't really defeat Dark Matter. We'll just be making it stronger. So that it can strike again worse than ever at some poor future Pokemon. Dark matter is made from our negativity, so we can't ever erase it completely. But if we do nothing now, this planet will be drawn into the sun. Then, what do we do? If you strike me down here and now, I will become more powerful than you could ever imagine. It, if you break my body into pieces, you will be the ones responsible for my return. Is that responsibility you want? Could you ever 
What guilt? No problem. You, you would still strike me down. You bet your silly sphere I would. Gabriel. It's okay, Neon. I finally get it. I understand now. When you really think about it, you, me, dark matter, even our planet, we were all born right here in the same universe, right? And yeah, everybody has some jealousy and hate in them, but that's just one side of you. You've got your good side and your bad side and even more sides than that. They're all part of you. They're all a part of who we are. They can't be denied. We just can't brush them away. So, Dark Matter, I'm okay with you being around. You... what? Are we going to defeat Dark Matter through the power of friendship? That'd be funny. I accept you. What? What are you saying? I am negativity itself. I am the darkness within your heart. Come on. It's not that hard to get. Like I said, that's a part of us. You are a part of us. You belong here with us. What? And I accept you. That is such an interesting thing to do. To have Dark Matter say thank you in such a way that you could easily miss it. Come back, everybody from the Voidlands. Gather all around, everybody. How are we going to get this planet back, though? <laughs> or is it just going to be teleported back? <laughs> Aw, that's cool. My save picture is a Lucario. But that was super good. That was super good. That was amazing. And I'm going to say it. Gabriel, the super mystery dungeon partner, best, best partner. Best partner, even if I still prefer Explorers at the end of this, which I'll have to do some major digging in my brain. That's just amazing. I'm going to quickly read chat because I got looped in there. This is honestly something that a lot of villains that do this concept kind of do wrong. Defeating hatred with and evil fundamentally doesn't work, which is why this is so good and well done. Indeed. And what a no better character to do it to. Leave it to Gabriel to look at the manifestation of all negativity and go like, Oh, you uh, you also really, really need a friend. <laughs> That's him. And now I'm back to being a Riolu. Final chapter. An end to beginnings. What does that mean? Uh, 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 um. Hey, we're back here. Where are we? Huh? Isn't this... Neon! Wake up! Hurry! You're gonna be late for school! Wait... It can't be... Neon! Don't go! Don't go into the light, Neon! <laughs> if they actually just killed the hero at the end of it, that'd be dark. Uh... Uh... Ow... Neon, thank goodness. You had me worried there. Gabriel, but where are we? Just look, Neon. Is that? The Tree of Life. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. It's a rainbow tree. And the music. Could it be? It's got to be. 
It's the tree of life. It really is the tree of life. We've only seen it withered and dying, so it's hard to recognize, but that's got to be how the tree of life is supposed to look. I never imagined it would be so beautiful. Pretty spiffy, isn't it? Look at all the different colors. This is the way it should be, I'm sure of it. Oh, what's that? It's coming right at us. Is it dark matter, but turned to light? Oh, it is Xerneas. I was wondering where you were. Well, not not is Xerneas, but like, oh, hey, Xerneas, you're here now. Whoa, somebody popped out of the light. Who, who are you? I am Xerneas. I am the Tree of Life. You are the Tree of Life? Yes, the Tree of Life made incarnate. This is Primeval Forest. As you can see, the Tree of Life has revived. This is all due to the actions of you two. Then what happened to Dark Matter? It is gone. Its darkness did not fall on this world. It found peace at last. It turned into a gentle light, which faded into nothingness. As a result, this world is no longer being drawn in toward the sun. Then that means... Yes, the world has been saved by you two. We thank you. Neon! I know, Gabriel. We did it! We really did it! We did it! Gabriel, Neon, watch out! Ah! Wow, you were falling for a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh. Seriously? I told you to slow it down. Oh, no. He came crashing in because he's like, oh, you're alive. What did you think would happen at that speed? Chirachi and Celebi, too. I just couldn't wait to give you and Gabriel a big ol' hug. But I may have underestimated my speed a bit, but it's fine. Because you did it, Gabriel. Neon, you two are amazing. I wasn't sure you'd really be able to do it, but you did. Thanks, Jirachi and Celebi. But how did you even know? Arceus told everyone what happened. Arceus did? Yeah, he sent a message out all to the Pokemon in the world. He said that the planet was safe now. The darkness that had been covering the world has been swept away. And the sun is back to the way it should be. Everyone is ecstatic and celebrating. I had no idea. Well, now you do. That's why I was so happy. I just wanted to grab you up and squeeze you till you... Huh? Why'd you dodge? Because you always go too fast, Jirachi. It would hurt to be hit at that speed. That's not a hug. That's a body slam. Really? Um, yeah. I'm glad you're so happy, but I don't think I need a body slam to prove it. Yeah! Ah, that's curious. I was just about to envelop Gabriel in my fond embrace, but Gabriel seems to have disappeared. Uh, Ampharos! Oh, if it isn't my Neon! Hmm, and now Neon has disappeared as well. Perhaps you should look behind you, Amphros. Esper! Neon, you did it! I imagine it was no easy thing to defeat Dark Matter as you did, but you protected our world. You did a fine job! But where is Gabriel? Did Gabriel go somewhere? Behind you, Amphros. Oh, what are you doing skulking back there? Was the battle so exhausting? No, I believe it is only because you ran into Gabriel not so long ago. What, moi? I can't believe France exists in the Pokemon world. You really never know where, you, uh, where you're going or where you're uh, what uh, where you are or where you're going, do you? Never mind how you managed to barrel in someone over and just keep on walking. Gabriel, forgive me. I offer my most sincere apologies. Are you all right? Yeah, I'll survive. I was just playing dead so you wouldn't hit me again. We're back, Chief. You did a fine job, Gabriel. You beat Dark Matter. Thanks, Amphros. <laughs> this is pretty nice. Praise me a bit more. I did a really good job. 
Oops, give an inch and some will... Some people will take a mile, huh? You do remember that it was only because of our efforts that the Tree of Life was stopped from flying right off the planet, right? Yeah, I won't forget that. It was thanks to you all that this world was saved. And that's why everyone's so happy right now. So just keep pouring it on. We saved the whole world! It's amazing! Do you know how amazing it is? Do you, Neon? I guess we should be praising you a bit more too, huh, Neon? Huh, me? <laughs> Looks like Neon's not as accustomed to all the attention. I'm not that fond of Gabriel's preening, but I'm glad. Imagine if I made Gabriel a piplup. That would be extra fitting. But I am glad. I'm so very glad that you both made it back. Esper. Esper. Oh, that's... Is that the expedition gadget ringing? I do, I do adore that Esper is like Gabriel and the hero's like best friend from Serene Town. That's just nice. They all took out their gadgets. Can anyone hear me? Dedene! Is that you, Dedene? Gabriel? You're all right then? Thank the stars. And Neon, what about Neon? Alive and kicking right here with us. We are all in primeval forest right now. Oh, Chief! Yes, your hard-working Chief is here, as is Jirachi. We are all fine. Forget him, Dedene. If you're calling us like this, then... That's right, I'm not turning to stone anymore. Everyone that explored the prehistoric ruins is back to normal. Mawile, Bunnelby, Buzel. And I managed to get a hold of Archin a little while ago. He's up on Revelation Mountain. I tried to reach Swirlix, but she was too busy stuffing herself with perfect apples to talk. Yep, <laughs> Swirlix didn't notice a single thing changed. Everyone's okay. And it's all thanks to you, Gabriel and Neon. It's unfortunate the other kids didn't see as much, but uh, one of them being present into uh, the real deep plot is nice. Yeah. Because, like, I don't... I think there's too many characters near the end, so having one kind of be, like, the main head one to represent them is very nice. Thank you both so much. That's great. That's really great to hear. Back then, I... Didn't he? Don't worry about us. Get out of here. For our sakes. I couldn't save you. Don't apologize for that. You fought so hard for all of us after that, and that's why we can still talk together like this. So, Chief, we're all headed back to Society Headquarters now. Mm, got it. We'll all celebrate back at Headquarters when we're home together. Yes, sir. We'll all see you there. So the other Pokemon who turned to stone should all be back to normal. And that means that Entei and Latias and all the rest of them are fine. And everyone in the village. My old pops. I'm so glad. Whatever happened to that the first BM? <laughs> we just kind of forgot him. Oh man, I can't hold it in anymore. Gabriel, you must have had to bottle up so many emotions to make it this far. You just take your time, child. As for the rest of you, I would say it's about time we all head home. I wonder why Xerneas looked at Gabriel. I'm wondering. I don't know. That seems like an important thing. Back to Lively Town. And so Neon and the other Expedition Society members return to Lively Town. Upon their return, they were welcomed with overwhelming congratulations and thanks. The various members who had been separated for so long were reunited at last. With the world saved, together they shared their joy and gratitude. And several days later, the goodbye scene has to happen at some point. The goodbye scene has to happen at some point. I think we're going to head back to Lively Town, get some more reunions, and something's going to happen. Mew might pop up and say, hey, hero, time to go home, but I live here. <laughs> Esper, thank you. We owe you a great deal for your help. That's quite all right. 
You gave me a place to be when I had nowhere left to go. I should be thanking you. Oh, that's called kind of a bow. You be careful on your way home. And the same goes for you, Gabriel and Neon. Yep. Thanks for giving us the time off to go visit, Amphros. Give our best to the good people of Serene Village. We will. I wonder if we're going to run into Nuzleaf. Then we'll be off now. This is cool music. Take care. Enjoy yourselves. Thanks to the world being at peace. And to the good offices at the Chief of the Expedition Society, of course. Gabriel and Neon took a bit of time off from exploring. In order to return home to Serene Village. This is a cool song. The plan had always been for Esper to return home to the village. And although they knew that the villagers were safe and things were back to normal, they still could not help worrying. And so they decided to return home for a short visit. The first time that I stood here and saw Lively Town with my own eyes, it all seemed so new and exciting. Looking at it now, that memory seems like it was a really long time ago. Thank goodness everyone returned back to normal after being turned to stone. Neon, Gabriel, I know I've said it before, but thank you for saving our world. It is a mysterious thing, isn't it? I first heard that Neon was a human all that long time ago in the village. But to think that it was actually an incredibly ancient Pokemon that called Neon to this world. Or that Neon had fought Dark Matter before in the ancient past. I know. I know what you mean. I was shocked, too, when I heard about it from Celebi, but about Mew and all that stuff. I can't really say anything about it, since I don't remember that time myself. It doesn't matter whether you remember it or not. You did your duty, Neon, both in the past and now again. Whenever the world needed you, Neon, you answered the call and came to save us from the dangers that had befallen us. You are our hero, Neon. I hope that doesn't ever forget that- I just realized something! <laughs> I just real- well, well, it's technically not an actual thing, but from my personal, like, mystery dungeon world lore, am I the, like, legendary Lucario who was, like, the Lucario rank rescue team? How can Neon have fought Dark Matter in the past as well as the present? Because I was pulled through time and space. Apparently, I fought it long, long ago, and then Mew yeeted me through time to stop it again. And this Neon was such a good guy, decided that he was going to fight it twice. But yeah, now I'm just wondering. It would be interesting, like, for my world lore, if fighting Dark Matter all those years ago got, like, mythologized into the Lucario rank rescue team thing as a legendary hero. And now here I am again. I think that'd be a fun lore thing for me personally. Even though, like, obviously the hero of the game can be any, like, starter Pokemon plus Riolu and Pikachu. I hope you don't ever forget that. That's right. Neon's my hero, too. So, come on, Neon. Show some pride. See? Like this. Stop, Gabriel. Just stop. I hate it when you make that face. What? Why? Thanks, Esper. And you too, Gabriel. Huh? Wait a sec. If I came to this world a long time ago in the past, but I must have gone back to the human world after battling Dark Matter, right? Probably because I'd done what I came here to do. But we got rid of Dark Matter. And now the world is at peace again. So what is going to happen to me? Now that I've done my duty, what will happen to me? I guess... I'll be going back to the human world and leaving this place. I might have to say goodbye to everyone. Huh? What is it, Neon? You're being a stick in the mud. You seem deep in thought. Is there something on your mind? Yeah? Well, okay then. As long as you're fine. Now, let's get going. I can't wait to see everybody again. Yeah, the goodbye. They're setting up the goodbye already. Through valleys, over mountains. Again, 
that line reminds me of fan lyrics to Runaway Fugitives, the song from Rescue Team. Because, like, through mountains and mountains and steep hills and valleys. I remember some of those lyrics. Through valleys over mountains, Gabriel, Neon, and Esper made their way back to Serene Village. And at last... We're here! Serene Village! What do you think? Will everyone be blown away to see us back? Everybody, we're back! Huh? Why is everyone still gone? Are they planning a surprise? Did Esper call ahead to make a surprise party? Everyone's gone? What could have happened? Neon Gabriel Esper, welcome home! Where were you guys hiding in the back? Whoa! Welcome home, you guys! H how did you all know we were even coming right now? Esper told us. Esper? You did? And then we all decided to surprise you. <laughs> Seriously? I can't believe you left us out of the loop like that. Well, I did. It only seemed natural when De Deerling first mentioned it. Even if Esper hadn't told us, though. We all knew you were coming back. Don't underestimate the power of the Kecleon Shop's information network. In any case, you have done the village proud. Gabriel and Neon, you two saved our whole world after all. I knew you could do it. I knew all along that it was all because you had a great teacher like me to guide you. Oh, I don't know. I think you might be wrong on that front, Vice Principal. Gabriel, Neon, thank you. Yes, this shall do, thank you. You two really grown up to be pretty fantastic. If I'm being perfectly frank, I'd had my doubts about you. I'm sorry for underestimating you all in all this, and thank you. Yes, thanks. Thank you so much, everybody. And we're so glad you're all back to normal. Where's Caracosta and Mr. Noseleaf? Oh, but where is Mr. Nuzleaf? Nuzleaf? You mean, he came back to this village? Yes, though he didn't do much to announce his presence. Or that was what I heard, anyway. Nuzleaf left. Pops! He went all around the village apologizing to everyone good and proper. But in the end, after what Nuzleaf had done, he couldn't bear to face Neon again. And so he left not long ago. I think that Mr. Nuzleaf was very sincere in regretting what he did. We don't hold anything against him. He was being controlled by another, after all. He is hardly to blame for his actions. Though he couldn't yet face Neon, he did say that he would be back again someday, without fail. He wanted me to tell you that, Neon. Time can heal most things, even if some hurts seem insurmountable at first. Could you see fit to wait for him? Nuzleaf. Pops! You're really okay? I was worried about you, you know? Yes, child. You know, when I think on it now, in all the years we've shared, I don't believe I've once told you how proud I am of you. We may not share blood, but that's no excuse for me to not be a better parent. Forgive me. You did good, Gabriel. And I thank you for it. B Bobs! <laughs> Gabriel. All right, everybody. Let's all hear it for Gabriel and Neon. Hip hip hooray! What about Crocodile, who was near the spring who turned to stone? Did he just book it once he came around? Probably. Or maybe he's still hunting after Nuzleaf. Nuzleaf, where's my fucking money? And so Gabriel and Neon were heaped with praise and thanks. Not only were the villagers thrilled to see the world at peace again, they were also curious to know about what had happened around the world. And so everyone gathered together at old Caracosta's home. And every last Pokemon in Serene Village. <laughs> to hear Gabriel recount the tale of their greatest adventure yet.
And that's how we learned that Neon had come to this world way back in the past, and fought alongside the ancient Pokemon Mew against Dark Matter. And at the end of their battles, Dark Matter was... it was... It was stopped, wasn't it? Right, yeah, it was stopped. By something. Um, because the stars, uh, the stars were, uh... What was it about the stars? Come on, don't leave us hanging now. <laughs> the tale became even more exciting in the telling, thanks to everyone's good humor. And a fine time was had by all. When the party finally broke up late that night, everyone went their separate ways, each returning to their own home. Except for Neon, who had nowhere to go but the empty house Nuzleaf, Nuzleaf had left. Instead, Neon stayed the night in the warm home Gabriel had grown up in. And Caracosta was all too happy to have them both home again. Hey, we could have a sleepover. Gabriel's room. It's been so long since I was last here. All right, beds are made. Wasn't today such a blast, Neon? I know I'm exhausted. Maybe I talk too much. Ugh. I can't stay up another minute. I'm calling it a night. Sleep tight, Neon. When is Mew gonna come and yank me from this world? Gabriel really was tired, huh? But it really was a fun day. I wonder how long these fun times can continue. These happy days of Gabriel and everyone. I wonder when I'll have to leave. I can't remember what happened in the past, so... I have no idea how long I was here for then. I guess I'm pretty tired, too. I think I'll just lie down for a bit. Oh, yeah. I guess what I should really be wondering about is not when I'll have to leave, but whether I want to. I love this world. I want to stay with Gabriel and everyone else I've met. That's right. I don't want to leave. Granted, you lost your mem- well, I lost my memories. So I guess. <laughs> Makes a double sense. You know, I just also realized this is kind of like Rescue Team done over as well. To a degree, a protagonist that came here, something flying in the stratosphere, Rayquaza blasting it, us losing our memory and not wanting to leave. I've got to try and find a way that I can stay here in this world. There has to be a way. I'll start looking for it tomorrow. A way to stay. We still don't know much about Gabriel. Why he was orphaned. Why Mew's, like, legacy generation gave the scarves to him. Ah, it's beautiful morning! Neon's still out like a log, but might feel up and ready to go. I guess I'll just go for a little walk on my own. Huh? What's that light? Looks like it'll land on the hill with the big tree. Pops, hey Pops, get a load of this! Huh? Gabriel's gone already. I wonder where. Oh, Neon, morning. You must have been tuckered out. You've slept half the morning away. What's that? You want to know where Gabriel has gone off to? Last I heard, Gabriel was planning to pop over to the hill with the big tree. The hill with the tree? That sure brings back some memories. Maybe I'll wander up there myself. Gotta say hello to everybody, and then we'll head over. Oh, good morning. On your way on today? Morning, Neon. Gotta get all these voices back in order. Good morning, Neon. I just remembered. I saw Gabriel go running past my house earlier. I would have thought you'd be together. I wonder what that light could be. Well, you know I saw Gabriel a little while ago again, running off toward the large tree up to the hill. Morning, Neon. You're up early today. Oh, morning, little Neon. Ah, where's that Gabriel? 
isn't Gabriel always with you? Good morning, Neon. Oh, if it isn't Neon. Morning, did you sleep well last night? Morning. You sure woke up, wake up early. M Neon, another fine day again today. Well, let's head on over. And see what happens with that light. Where's the light, Gabriel? Gabriel! Oh, morning, Neon. Neon. Come on over. It feels nice under the clouds. Why'd you... Neon under your... Here it is again, the partner's theme. It's true. Now that I think about it, we were sitting here under the clouds just like this. You remember? Back when we first met, you and I came up to this hill, and I told you about my dream. I remember. This is where I gave you that scarf, too. This is where Amphros let us become Junior Expedition Society members. This is where we decided to leave the village and set out together. There are so many memories up here. It's true. I remember so many times. It's no wonder, though. This is a great spot. The wind feels so nice up here. I really... I really want to stay in this world. That's it. Gabriel... And so Neon told Gabriel what was coming. Neon! And how the role that Neon had to play in this world had come to an end. Before long, it would be time to return to the human world. And yet, and yet Neon wished to stay right here, in this world. And so they needed to find a way, a way for Neon to stay. So Neon explained to Gabriel on that day, there on the hill with the big tree, more than anything else, I want to stay here with you, Gabriel. I don't ever want to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Neon. Gabriel? Neon? Do you know why I came here? I saw a light falling here, onto this hill. That light was actually Xerneas. Xerneas? When he found me here, Xerneas said that he was here to wake me. Xerneas, what do you mean, wake you? Xerneas came to wake Gabriel? He said he'd promised me. Why would Xerneas promise me something like that? And when even? It all seemed like some kind of weird joke. When I touched Xerneas's horns, I understood. I remembered. What, game what? Neon, the truth is. <laughs> What? 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 You? You? Well, I guess poetry. I fought along you uh, to fight the dark matter in the past. I guess that explains how you were an orphan and placed on Caracosa's doorstep with the harmony scarves. The truth is, I'm Mew. And I guess that also explains how you can read ancient Pokemon. M Mew? That Mew? The one who? Yeah. Back when Celebi told me that he thought this battle would be my battle to fight, I knew somehow that he was right. It was like something just clicked. Although I had no idea what it meant then. But once I touched Xerneas, I finally got it. And that also explains why Xerneas had that dot 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 looking at, at, at Gabriel. In my previous life, I was Mew. In a previous life? Neon, you meant a long time ago. Way longer than you can even imagine. And when we fought, way back then in the past, we defeated Dark Matter thanks to the stars aligning just right. Or that's what we thought. But that wasn't really true. Neon, you and Mew defeated Dark Matter using all your strength. But it's no good to just defeat Dark Matter. All the hatred inside Dark Matter rained down upon the world so that Dark Matter would be reborn in a distant future. And it was. It's like Dark Matter told us in this battle. In other words, the last time we defeated Dark Matter, we actually failed. Mew messed up. I messed up. So I was prepared to take responsibility. I sent my own spirit into the future to be born as Gabriel. Gabriel, you... Neon, 
It wasn't the Behem that made you lose all your memories. What? It was me. I, or Mew, erased your memories. It was what you agreed to before you came to this world. I agreed to having my memories erased? We've made all those plans, like sealing the luminous water and all that, but I realized if we just depended on what we already knew, we just repeat the same mistakes. We couldn't win like that. Dark Matter was born from the negative emotions lurking within ancient Pokemon. Some of those emotions originated from you as well. But when I accepted Dark Matter, Dark Matter disappeared, along with the part of it that came from Mew. It was my battle. I was fighting to forgive Mew, to forgive myself. The moment that I accepted Dark Matter, I set in motion my own destruction as a part of Dark Matter. It's not you who has to go, Neon. What? It's me. You are not on the anniversary! Flipping the script! Gabriel! I asked Xerneas for one more favor. When I remembered everything, I knew I would disappear. But I wanted to at least tell you, Neon. I had to explain. I begged him not to make me disappear before I at least got to do that. So, I'm glad he kept his end of the bargain. It's a strange feeling. I'm you, but at the same time, I'm not. I'm Gabriel too, you know? I'm not the same Mew I was back then. The part of me that is Mew is filled with joy at finally having done what I was meant to do. But the part of me that is Gabriel hates that I have to give up on my dreams right when I was just getting started. And hates that I have to say goodbye to you. Just so you know, Neon. <laughs> I really, really wanted to stay with you too, Neon. I actually wanted to stay with you forever, but, but, the light, Gabriel! I guess I'm out of time. Just remember that this world only keeps going because everyone supports one another. They live every day accepting one another. The one who taught that truth to a self-centered fool like me is you, Neon. Gabriel! I had a lot of fun, getting to have a dream, getting to meet you, getting to live. Gabriel, wait! Thank you. It was all because of you, Neon. Oh, you bastards! I'll be fine! I'm always fine, aren't I? So, Neon, do me one last favor, and don't you cry! Gabriel is... No, it can't be! This isn't how it was supposed to end. In more ways than one. Is this why I chose to forget everything? Did I know that this is the only way things could end? Did I have to forget to be able to go through with it all? For the sake of the Pokemon world? And most of all, for Gabriel? Gabriel! Gabriel! Jesus Christ! I'm shedding tears. Oh! Don't you put the, the end right there on my crying body! Don't you- Oh, you're gonna roll the credits, aren't you?! You fuckers! <laughs> they have the balls to roll the credits over my crying self! I need to stay hydrated. This is good music, but... <laughs> They have the balls to roll the credits on my crying self. I am sobbing there in universe. 
They have the balls to play the Uno reverse card on the formula in the anniversary game? Huh. Well, I, I could never have expected that. It's very cool that they made the partner so important to the story, but god damn! Chadong Woon. But. Huh. They knew they couldn't do it again. They knew you'd expect it. But at the same time, expecting it is part of the tragedy to the to a point. Where we knew we have to leave. And it's mostly just the handling of the leaving that was like the flavor. But this time they decided, you know what? What if we stab you in a different way? Ah! Oh! And the worst thing is, like, I have no idea if it's even possible to bring Gabriel back! Meh. <laughs> I have a question for Arceus. Why? The music is great. The graphics are great. I'll give my thoughts on this game. The graphics, really cool. The cutscenes, amazing. Like, I, I love how the cutscenes were sparingly done. So they were only meant for, like, epic moments. Made them feel special. Really built on what they did with GTI. The, uh, like, helping Pokemon system and having them help you in return is a cool recruitment mechanic in-universe. Makes a lot of sense. And that's like a depressing... <laughs> they're playing depressing notes now. But yeah, the music in this game, amazing. The characters, great. I loved the slow burn aspect of the first half. And then the Expedition Society. And, like, the way they did that kind of allowed them to spread out the cast a bit more. So you had more characters to get invested in. So it wasn't just kind of like Wigglytuff's Guild 2.0. But it's just like... Yeah, the Super Mystery Dungeon partner is the best partner. Like, already due to their personality, their, like place in the story, and now because they are wholly unique by not only being a legendary all along, but having the fucking gall to take my role in disappearing from this world. And aside from, like, the undersea cavern, submerged cave level, which just was a weird, isolated difficulty spike. Everything else was great. I thought Mew was gonna come down and be like, sorry, you have to go back to the human world. But then again, I should've... <laughs> you know what? I was half right. I was kinda jokingly saying, ha ha ha, what if Gabriel was actually the ancient human? Well, he was there! I Mew is such a hard line. It is. It is. Because, like, on the one hand, it, it was kind of implied that Mew was a spirit or died or something. We, uh, we still kind of don't know who wrote the ancient Pokemon writings in the Voidlands. Esper is great. Ampharos is fun. The whole Expedition Society is great. Buttleby just got shafted five ways from Sunday because he was hardly there at all until the void lands and then he would became imposter swirlix is kind of the butt monkey too like i find it hilarious that this is like the most depressing sounding credits music they've made for any of the games yeah all the other ones kind of felt triumphant
This one, some triumphant bits, and then some droning... Oh. The one downside, though, from, is the shock kind of undercut my my emotions. Like, the shock overtook my sorrow and uh, grief... Well, not grief, but, like, melancholy. Because <laughs> I, I still shed some tears, but, like, my theorizing, storytelling brain activated. And it's just, like, pondering, 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 and wiped all my tears away very quickly. What's the credit OST? I have no idea. I do not know its name. Well, yeah, this... This is amazing. This is great. God, I want another Mystery Dungeon game. God, I want another Mystery Dungeon game. Because they je just kept getting better. There is a certain lightning in a bottle aspect to explorers. There was a motif in there. There was a motif right then. Like... Ah, oh, Satoru Iwata. Hats off to you. But yeah. God, it's only- it's almost been 10 years. It's almost been 20 years since the entire thing started. Yeah, it's almost been 10 years since the last original one now. And they just kept getting better. Gate to Infinity was great. This was also great. When two spirits meet and go through so much together, they must be drawn back together. Da -da, da -da. They will surely meet again. You better. The end. You dare stab me in the heart? You dare punch me in the gut of my heart? You fuck. You un- You undercut my expectations? I want to continue, but we've been going for four and a half hours. We will have to- Then again, it works because that was the end of the main story. We can begin post-game next time. I don't even know if we're gonna get Gabriel back. Oh! <laughs> Rescue Team DX is good for what it is, but of course it's still a remake. I can definitely see, like, the quality of life things and, like, the added cutscenes of it being a 3D game bringing it up a bit. Although I do, if I ever get around to playing it, I will miss the personalized friend areas. Even though streamlining it so it's a menu is probably overall the better for flow, considering how often you're going to have to be taking your allies in and out. But, yeah, they just kept getting better. Like, Rescue Team is the simplest out of all of them, and I still recommend it as a starting point for people, because I don't think they'd appreciate Rescue Team if they played it after any of the others. The gameplay is simpler, but also, like, the post-game is a nightmare because of traps and IQ skills. But the story, the characters, they're all simple and fun. Explorers, like I said, is a lightning in a bottle. It just captures something. Like, the story is, like, probably, like, it's hard to say. This, blah, blah. Explorers, like, oh, you don't even know. At this rate, I'm gonna have to replay Explorers just to get my head in order. Because I think Super Mystery Dungeon might be my favorite now. It is at least tied with Explorers, if not the better one. GTI was good, but it was condensed. But at the same time, that worked to its favor to a degree because it made it concise. GTI was very, very good for being concise, although I still wish that there was, like, more story, special episodes, more epilogue.
Pokemon has had such an effect on my life, it's one of the reasons why I can't give up on the franchise. Yeah. Funnily, like, normal Pokemon games, they're just kind of eh to me. I enjoy them, but they're not, like, super diehard for me. The anime I really enjoy. I need to watch the anime again. Or at least some episodes, some seasons. <laughs> Maybe a binge a season, take a break. But, like, the Mystery Dungeon games... The Mystery Dungeon games are great. I will stand on the Mystery Dungeon games being better than the main series. Because it focuses on story so much, and I love it. PMD is one of those franchises I didn't quite realize how much it meant to me. Says my YouTube chat. For me, I always kind of figured that, like... Pokemon Mystery Dungeon has always meant a lot to me because it was the first game to make me cry. Rescue Team made me cry, purely because of how simple and earnest it was. Heart, I don't think I've ever cried at any other game. The old, like, Mystery Dungeon is the only series to make me cry. I've, like, cried at other stories, though, books and stuff. Lots of fan fiction made me cry. But this is very, very good. I feel like a, a lot about Super is just GTI's plot, but better. Though, of course, Gates did some things good. Gates, I think, has a unique feel to it and a unique tone. Because... GTI was all about, like, yeah, like... It focused more on the negativity becoming a thing. And how... Like, we had to fight against it before, like, the bitter cold became a thing. And they focused more on it with, like, Girder being, like, turning to thievery and crookery because of his nihilism. Same thing with, like, uh, I forget his name. Scarfy? Scrafty. And, like, I personally think that GTI has a better ensemble because it feels like the characters are there a long time. Like, I do think that Super has a better, like, overall characters, like Esper, the school kids, and the Expedition Society. But Paradise's main characters, as an ensemble, work really well. They have a nice presence to them. Like, it's similar to how Wigglytuff's guild, it, like, falls apart a little bit because they repeat a lot. There's not a lot of things to do with them. They don't really feel like prevalent characters. And it's kind of the same thing with the Expedition Society to a little bit. To a little bit. It's just, like, certain characters stand out, like Ampharos, Jirachi, Esper, Mawile there for a little bit. Characters stand out for moments. GTI, with the main Paradise cast, made all the, like, the, the village, like, I don't know. GTI has a very, very good ensemble to all, like, the village and the characters and stuff. They have a very good presence. And I think that's part of, like, it's not an issue, but it's, like, the creative choice of having you be in Serene Village for half the game. And then going to Lively Town is that, like... None of the Lively Town villagers really stand out to you. Meanwhile, I know about Lillipup's, like, grandfather. And then I forget, like, Sawaddle's mother. I remember, like, uh, the duck guy. I remember the little, like, I forget their names because I'm terrible with names. I remember, like, uh, the crab guy that didn't want to show his face again. Like, a bunch of the characters stand out. Actually, I came to think of it. It's almost like GTI is a better rescue team to a degree of when it comes to the village. Because the village and those characters stand out a lot and they have a lot of presence. Super is a better Wigglytuff's guild. Because the like characters that you hang around with day after day have a lot more presence to them in that function. It's like each one has their ups and downs, their pros and cons. And it does kind of feel like they retread the 
like, overall villain concept. But again, I kind of like the idea that there are different aspects of, like, negative energy, similar to how there's multiple voices of life from GTI. So, Hydrogen was fighting against the bitter cold, that was his, like, opposite. And in this one, we have yet another different take on it. Like, any, like, not, like, a negativity so dense and powerful that it became its own thing. It's almost like we were fighting Flowey from Undertale. <laughs> I can agree there, yeah? The Paradise Crew are wonderful. Well, now that you know as much as us in the Mystery Dungeon franchise, how do you feel about ranking the four games? I'll definitely do that in a second. Ampy as a leader, too, has a lot more presence and an active role. I do, yeah, that's definitely true. I do think I slightly, like, it could just be uh, lightning in a bottle, like, nostalgic glasses, but I do find Wigglytuff more interesting. Like, there's a little bit, like, extra to him. But Ampharos is better as a bumbling but competent. Wigglytuff is wild card weird. But, like, yeah, it's just, like, they both have their pros and cons. It's just that they, like, have their own, like, they, it is a little weird to compare them only because they are leaders of their respective organization. But Wigglytuff is interesting in some ways, but when it comes to story, Amphros is very much a good presence. So I just looked it up, and how long to beat says the typical time for a leisurely playthrough is exactly 3144, which is your exact playtime. Huh. I don't- I didn't feel like I was that leisurely. Because I basically did all of the main story as it happened. Granted, I didn't, like, beeline through the story. Then again, we also did some world tours around the various continents. Uh, once or twice, so that probably elongated it a little bit. And I also did like to go around and talk to everybody when available. So, yeah, I guess technically we did a leisurely. <laughs> Damn, we're officially leisurely. But if I had to rank the Mystery Dungeon games... Well, you were voicing the characters as, as your uh, text reading speed was slower. That's also true. And plus, I've taken the time to talk to the chat during the game from time to time. But to lightly rank my Mystery Dungeon list of favorites, number four would be have to be Rescue Team. Rescue Team suffers from first game syndrome. They didn't exactly, like... Then again, it's not technically the first game because Spike Chunsoft made a bunch of Mystery Dungeon games before they teamed up with Pokemon to make it. But when it comes to Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, it's a uh, first game syndrome. Because, like, the bag never grew, if I remember correctly. And, like, uh, there were just weird little things about it. But it was simple and competent. Even if the characters... Even if the characters were very... They weren't shallow, they were just simple. And I, I still adore Rescue Team, but it is the simplest out of all of them. And the story is very straightforward. It's just, you are a Pokemon, go do... like It's basically kind of like a one-season anime that's very straightforward. You wake up as a Pokemon, you do some Rescue Team stuff... You have a run-in with Team Meanies. The... I forget if we build our house before or after the Fugitive Arc. But eventually there's the Fugitive Arc, which is, like, the big thing. And then there's, like, saving the world from the Meteor. And then only light epilogue stuff. I still highly recommend it as a beginning point for people wanting to get into Pokemon Mystery Dungeon because that simplicity allows you to slide in and still enjoy Rescue Team as a beginning. You can enjoy Rescue Team as a beginning, 
without having to look back and, like, get annoyed at the lack of quality of life stuff, at the gummy system, or at how simple the characters and story is. Worst of a very, very good bunch is definitely not bad for Rescue Team. Exactly. <laughs> After the future dark for the house, it's a really weird side thing in the middle of two serious plot points. I recommend the remake if you have a Switch for sure. That's also true. Although that would then leave... I don't know. I think I would personally recommend Blue Rescue Team on the DS. Purely so people can then transition into Explorers. Because... The problem is, if you go from Rescue Team DX into Explorers of Sky, you then have to acclimate backwards. You have to go back to Gummies, even if they did Gummies a lot better in Explorers of Sky, at least, because of the uh, of the uh, Spinda shop, Spinda's Cafe. But like, just like, uh, although there, I guess there's like enough similar to, like, Rescue Team DX that it wouldn't be terrible, but I just, uh... Explorers has a good place in my heart that I would worry that experiencing it out of order, but at the same time, Rescue Team DX is probably the best way to experience Rescue Team because of the better presentation and quality of life. Uh, Spike Chunsoft, please make an Explorers remake for the anniversary. At least. I would definitely take a brand new Mystery Dungeon game. But if, out of anything, if you had to, uh, to do a remake, do a remake of Explorers. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, you start with the, uh, the remake and the, uh, for Rescue Team and then start with the remake of Explorers next year. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely prefer a brand new Mystery Dungeon game because, like, a brand new Mystery Dungeon story is what I crave. But if I had to settle for a, res for a Explorers remake, God, that would... That would really, really do Explorer's Wonders. Although then that would kind of hurt Spindus Cafe because the, the the beauty of Spindus Cafe is you kind of begin the day or end the day by going down to Spindus Cafe to spend your gummies. And it's kind of like unwinding a bit in-universe. I'm sure they could think of something. <laughs> but back on my ranking... Rescue Team is, sadly, in last place because it is the first game. It is the simplest. The story is the most straightforward. The characters are still good. The story is fine. The music is great. But it is the first game and doesn't have, like, the building blocks the rest of the games had. Third overall would then... The third would have to be GTI. Mostly because of its runtime. GTI was very short. Gates to Infinity was shorter in all the others because it was very condensed. But it was condensed in a good way. The characters was very good. The story was very fun. My main gripe with the story would have to be now that Bitter Cold has no personality. Kyurem is kind of a weirdo. And Muna's gang, despite having a lot of build-up to Muna... Her betrayal is so sudden that you don't, like, because you, you're built up more to the idea of, oh, when are we going to find Muna? She brought us here, right? And then, surprise, I am bitch is a very quick and sudden twist that wasn't allowed to sit. And again, I cannot, like decide first place and second place. It is a constant jumble of explorers and super now. Super is... Then again, I haven't even completed the post game. Maybe the post game will knock it out of the park, but... Because it's funny, because so far, explorers has, like, more negatives to it than Super Mystery Dungeon. 
like the post game is very simple in a lot of places like it still has some rescue team post game to it where it's like hey do this thing for the sake of doing it and only a few times are there hypey uh, like hype important story post game like manaphy like dark rye but then there are the special episodes which are nice but super is so well done because it lets you go out on expeditions and like the way you recruit Pokemon like the leveling up mechanics from GTI like the world the pacing I loved the the slow burn of super in the first half I love that they brought at least Esper back for the finale the final boss was great. It's just that Explorers is special to me. It's a, it's a bias thing. The story of Explorers just feels nice to me. It's interesting. The vibe hits good. I think... Like, a part of it could be a little bit of nostalgia for the pixel art of Explorers. But at the same time, imagining what the cutscenes could be like in 3D, that could be dope. It's just like, Explorers is special to me. But more than likely, more than likely, Super is number one. More than likely, Super is number one because it has good gameplay. I started to get into the flow of using the, the wands at the end. Like, the way you make money not through doing missions but selling apples in the first half is really cool. The characters, the vibes, the music. The story was godlike. Because there's so many moving parts to it. There's so many, like, different aspects that they set up. And they all roll in together at the end. And that's just amazing. The story, like... It's funny how, like, Explorers is probably the Mystery Dungeon game that, like, a lot of the fans remember. But Super Mystery Dungeon feels like the most accurate to how, like, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon fanfics are. It's big, it's sprawling, tons of characters that are giving their time. It's great. <laughs> Quickly gonna recheck, because I was just rambling to myself there. I predicted a PMD would either go with a remake of Explorers or a mobile game for the longest time, and then I was half right, I guess. To be fair, I think Rescue Team kind of deserves a remake, because, again, it is a fantastic starting point. You want to know... You want to know what... You want to know what I would adore for the 20th anniversary of uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? If they made, like, it, it would never happen because it's a lot. But considering what, like, uh, other 3DS games have been getting ports, what if they made it a port collection of Gates to Infinity and Super Mystery Dungeon and ported that as, like, a, a two-pack to, like, Switch or Switch 2 and then released, like a remake of Explorers while also announce, announcing that at a later date a new Mystery Dungeon would come out. That would just be happy birthday to all Mystery Dungeon fans. But blah, 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 blah. Honestly, I think if they're making a new PMD, I understand Spike Chunshoft is currently surviving uh, game to game on finances. Eh. That's sad to hear. It's probably going to be a uh, PMD5, hopefully. Hopefully they do well. Which is funny, because I thought that... 
I thought that like Spike Chunsoft is also making uh Dragon Ball uh Sparking Neo uh, Neo Zero. Uh, Sparking Zero that's coming out soon. Hopefully that will boost up their their finances. Uh, they'd hopefully adapt it, giving the uh, adapted gummies for the remake. That's also true. Nuzleaf was executed better as a villain for sure. Nuzleaf is a fantastic villain. And the funny thing is, like, until we get to him, presumably in the post-game to meet him, hopefully, like, he was kind of a mystery, and we don't know exactly how he was taken over by Dark Matter, but I love that he was there from the start. Uh, tied first for liking both for different reasons is valid. Yeah, it's just... The stories I like for different reasons. Super's story is really, really great in the pacing and the characters and how sprawling it is. Explorer's story works for me because of vibes. Because of the vibes. It has a smaller cast to focus on, I think, and that's why, like, Dusk Noir, Grovile, uh, Shiny, uh... Celebi and everything like because it was like a smaller cast that got focus it's a little bit more iconic to a degree and plus it's just cool ideas and I also have a bias because it has the most repeating motifs that I can properly hear in casual playthrough so when like through the sea of time hits it punches me in the gut when in the hands of fate hits all hits hard. When Time Gear plays, my heart. <laughs> it is really hard to compete with the nostalgic pixel art style. There's just something special about it. There's just something nice about it. Although, like, the 3D very... It grew on me very fast. The 3D really, really works. Honestly, out of all the 100% uh, percent super is by far the largest and the one I'm closest to doing. Eh. The final reveal of the partner being Mew clicks all the final pieces into place. It definitely does. I do think that there could have been, like, more foreshadowing. Like, to a human fighting dark matter in the past. And, like, foreshadowing us being from the past. Foreshadowing, like... Granted, I don't think that they needed to foreshadow more on Gabriel. Because Gabriel had so much happening. Like, he, why did he have the scars? Why was he an orphan? Uh, why could he read Ancient Pokey? And the closest I got was guessing that he was the ancient human, actually. And I, I was halfway there. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, my best buddy flew off into the sky. It, it's still very weird to be on the other side of that for once. Rescue Team deserves it, yes, but, you know, fan favorite priority. That's true. But again... It's kind of nice that Rescue Team got the remake first, because, again, it's a nice jumping on point. I think they foreshadowed it fine since they did it enough that it works, but not too much that it kind of becomes obvious. True. I feel most of why it works is the shock. Yeah, because... I do like, because here's the thing, I do not think they foreshadowed in any shape, way, or form that Gabriel was going to be Mew, except ever so slightly at the end, where A, they said that Mew was a, a spirit that brought us to the future, that this was Gabriel's fight. Those were, like, the two big ones. But I sooner thought, oh, Gabriel is the human because I think I thought that would be an interesting twist. Like, oh, we were just a human brought here, and Gabriel was the special one. Which, again, would kind of fall into the funny aha, like, uh, the, the partner is the actual hero of the story. But, because, like... They built up that something was going on with Gabriel. Something was special about Gabriel. I did not guess that he was going to be Mew. At all. I thought Mew was gone. I thought Mew might pop up near the end. Did! Like, again, I knew something was going on. Like, I thought maybe he was created by Mew. No, he just turned out to be Mew. Then again, with this game, I think, like, 
it works to maybe have a little bit more foreshadowing just because so much is going on. There is so much going on that many things could be many things. Like, a part of me was wondering if maybe Gabriel might have been, like, a Pokemon from the ancient past who got locked in the, like, void lands and wrote the ancient Pokemon things and the hints about dark matter and stuff and somehow made it out. I don't know. I had a lot of weird ideas. <laughs> but yeah, Super Mystery Dungeon, fantastic. Probably the best. Basically, the best way to put it, Explorers is the best DS, uh, like, Mystery Dungeon game, the best pixel art one, and then Super Mystery Dungeon is the best 3D Mystery Dungeon game. And there's just little things they do differently, the different vibes, small differences, like, Explorers is the peak of that, like, Rescue Team gameplay. Super is the peak of the GTI gameplay. Explorers... I think I got it. Explorers mastered the simple storytelling of Rescue Team. They fleshed out the characters. They hyped up the... or, like, ramped up the special personalities of, like, Wigglytuff's guild and made the world-destroying calamity interesting while introducing, like, some mysteries. Like, very simple, but impactful. Super took the kind of concise ideas of GTI and expanded them while keeping good pacing and stuff. Like, it's hard to compare them because despite both being Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, they're both so very different. Questions on questions, mysteries on mysteries. That's this game's MO. Oh, it definitely is. Like, again, I remember when the first time we went up Revelation Mountain, I'm just like, something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. And then nothing happened. That worried me greatly. But yeah, in the end, this is a fantastic game. It is sad that it has been ten years since it came out. And I really hope more people give, like, any Mystery Dungeon game a chance. Rescue Team, Rescue Team DX, Explorers of Sky, Gates to Infinity Super. They're all great in their own ways. They all have great characters. They all tell great stories. It's just so nice. But I do believe that that will be it for now. We've been going for five hours, and I've been rambling for like 30 minutes. Again, cannot believe that they twisted it, the, the ending around on us for the anniversary game. They're like, psych. You're the one who gets to stay. Guess what? You wanted to stay? Sure. But you said nothing about your partner. And then he flew away. It is weird because I think, like, the twist carries that ending. Because the emotions, like, I don't know. Maybe it was the... Maybe it was the music. Maybe it was something. But the emotions didn't hit as hard. But it was still great. Then again, it's probably because they, like, how they, like, uh, the twist exists. So, like, your expectations of, like, the heartfelt goodbye get undercut. Because, surprise, the heartfelt goodbye is no longer for you, technically. And now you have to go back in town and tell everybody, Gabriel is gone! Isn't that fun? Oh. Oh, good thing you want to stay, because kind of dick move stranding this human here forever. <laughs> but yes, this was great. The main story of Super Mystery Dungeon is amazing. And next time, we will be experiencing the beginning of the epilogue, the post-game. 
Also, I think I just realized what that chapter name meant. The end of beginnings. Or end to beginnings. Sadness. But, uh, just a heads up. Family is gonna be coming in on the weekend this weekend. So I might not be able to stream on Saturday? I still, like, uh, I still might be able to, but I don't know. It depends on how things go. But, yeah, just letting people know. Might not be able to do a stream on Saturday, but definitely should be able to do one on Monday. At the very least. This is the downside of, like, not being super active on my Twitter, so then I could tell people, ah, I will uh, follow my Twitter. Well, then again, Twitter's not really a good place. There's really no good way for me to send out messages to be like, hey, I will be able to do it, or I won't be able to do it to let people stay on top of it. So you know what? I I'm going to take a break, because it's uncertain. I don't want people to potentially miss out on things. So I'm going to take a break this Saturday, just uh, not worry about it. Family's coming in, whether or not I have time for it. And uh, then we will pick up back on Monday, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And we will see if we can get Gabriel back. Or if we're forced to play a long, long time alone. Oh. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, my link tree, linktr.ee slash neonicywings has everything that I do. My edited YouTube content channel, my streaming Twitch, and my streaming YouTube, depending on your preference. And then all of these you, all of these streams, all these VODs, get uploaded to the streaming YouTube channel after the fact. And then if you want other things from me, like art, similar to my little character in the corner, you can follow me on various different art sites and social medias linked in my link tree, where I post art to. Then if you want to read stories, like my various uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon stories and more that I'm writing, uh, links to some writing resources I post to. And then finally, uh, my uh, Patreon is also linked in there for the super generous, and it's just like a little donation bucket for the kind. But yes, thank you very much, everybody, for watching tonight. Just remember, be you, be true, be happy. But most importantly... Be kind, stay hydrated, and thank you for spending your time with me. I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye, bye.